guys! Welcome to the first lesson of the course Pinterest Marketing Hero. In this lesson, we're going to talk about what is Pinterest. Let's get started. Pinterest is a social media platform that is mostly used by people who are searching for visual content to discover new ideas, get inspiration, or learn something from. It was designed to discover information using images, GIFs, or videos. You can search for any keyword on its platform, and you can discover tons of search results related to your keyword. Pinterest is more appealing to a large group of women who are looking for products that they can purchase online. You can search for products in any niche, and you can find products from different sites that offer the products that you are looking for. Pinterest allows its users to share images, GIFs, and videos. These are called pins. It connects everyone by the things that they find interesting. Same as other social media platforms, Pinterest is a place where friends connect with each other and follow brands. People prefer looking at photos or watching videos, so you can create images as pins that are related to your blog post and you can easily attract more audiences to your blog site, increasing your website traffic. If you're a new Pinterest user, you can collect images that you can find interesting from the pins that you have discovered inside a platform or even images that you have discovered from different websites. Pinterest has its own unique feed. The images or videos that you will see on your feed are based on your recent searches and viewed pins. Your home feed is a section where you can discover visual content from topics related to your keyword searches. Also, these are pins saved by people you follow and topics or boards that you also follow. The pins that you can see on your home feed are related to these pins. Most pins that you will see here are the visual content that interests you. The following feed is the section where you can discover the latest ideas saved or uploaded by the people you follow. This also applies to the brands you follow. The pins that you will see on this feed are chronologically arranged, so whenever you refresh this feed or click on the following tab, these pins will be updated with the latest pin saved or uploaded by the accounts that you follow. Today tab. This tab is a curated set of ideas that are trending. Take note that the Today tab is only available in a few countries. Check out the Today tab availability on Pinterest to see if your country is on the list. You can even tune your home feed to edit your preference and change things up. You can easily find that in the section and choose Tune your home feed. It shows you all your boards, the last three months of your activity history, and the topics that you follow. You also have the option to turn these off. Let's look at some terminologies that you can encounter on Pinterest. It has its own lingo that you must be aware of, especially if you're going to promote your brand, website, or e-commerce store in your Pinterest account. Pinterest users are called pinners since they use pins inside the platform. Pins are the term used to refer to images, GIFs, or videos that you can discover on Pinterest. If you gather the pins based on the category that they belong to, you can save them together inside a board. A board is like a folder where you can save all your pins. If you want to save pins that are owned by other Pinterest users, that is called repinning. Pinterest is a great platform to look for ideas, for recipes, inspiration, or home improvement. It works like Google, but it gives you search results of visual content referred to as pins rather than articles. Now that you know what Pinterest is, we can now proceed to the next topic, how does Pinterest work for business? I'll see you there. Hello guys! In this lesson, we're going to talk about how does Pinterest work for business. Let's get started. Pinterest can be a source to showcase your brand and engage in the niche-related marketplace where most people are looking to purchase something. Pins help people discover new information about the products they are looking to buy. That is why pins from business accounts are linked to a website where people can land on their page and discover their content or online store. Pinterest can help business owners create brand awareness, increase website traffic, and generate leads, then eventually convert them as your buying customers. You can easily get traffic from Pinterest and drive traffic to your e-commerce store 
blogs, by using pins to direct people to your site. Pinterest has over 300 million monthly users, and it's not possible to attract your target audience from those active users. Most active Pinterest users are from the United States, who are mostly women in the age of 25 to 54 years old. Over 8 million pinners are actively engaging on Pinterest with automated content. Over 90% of pinners use the platform to gather ideas for future purchase plans, and 40% of them have a household income of over $100,000. That is a huge number of audiences that you can target and they can spend on products that they can discover on Pinterest. One of those products can be the products of your brand. You just need to apply the proper marketing strategies on your Pinterest account to attract these target audiences. If you haven't created a Pinterest business account yet, you might be missing out on the huge market that you can tap on and these people might be interested in the niche related to your business. Pinterest can help you build your brand's image. It is the only search engine that provides visual content as graphics, referred to as pins, on its search results. People use it to look for new ideas and inspiration, and your brand's pins can appear on the search results. Then people can discover your Pinterest business account. It can easily show your customers who your brand is and what you do visually with all the pins and boards in your profile. Using Shop the Look pins to convert your leads to customers and increase your sales. There are pins where you can see white dots on multiple parts of a pin. This feature makes it powerful for brands and businesses since it allows you to tag multiple products in each pin and each product gets tagged with a different product URL. It makes it easier for people to purchase your products right through the app. People want to do things fast. If you apply Shop the Look pins on your Pinterest pins, your target audience can discover your product and find it easier to purchase your products without searching for that product on your website. Your pins can help your products be discoverable since it can be linked to a URL. People can click on your pin and land on your website. As a business owner, you want to get the metrics of your pins and your performance as well. You can easily track your performance on Pinterest using its analytics. You can see which strategies and content work for your business to improve your marketing strategy on Pinterest. Most of the pins found on Pinterest are linked to business websites. Your target audience is most likely to use the platform to search for ideas, inspiration, and products to buy. With the right marketing strategy, they can discover your pins and land on your website. So start promoting your products and services on Pinterest so you don't miss out on potential leads and sales. Now that you know how this Pinterest work for business, we can now proceed to the next topic, Pinterest personal versus business accounts. I'll see you there. Hello guys. In this lesson, we're going to talk about Pinterest personal versus Pinterest business account. Let's get started. Like Instagram, you can create a personal account or a business account on Pinterest. If you are trying to find out which type of account is right for you, then you must first determine how you plan on using your account on Pinterest. First, let's talk about Pinterest personal accounts. With personal accounts, you can see that you can only add a profile photo like in this example profile. Below the profile photo, you can view the number of followers and the number of Pinterest accounts, that is the personal accounts you follow. In this example, Martha Lopez has a personal account with 23,000 followers and she is following 655 Pinterest accounts. You can browse a personal profile's account and you will see the different boards they have created, the different pins, and if they have tried a pin. As you click on the board, you can see the photos here. There's also a shop tab where you can find similar photos that you can see inside the board and purchase them. In this example, it shows us different dresses that you can discover. With the More Ideas tab, Pinterest will show us more pins related to each pin saved inside the board, teal. In this section, it will show you more keyword ideas that you can click on that is also related to the pins inside this board. Pinterest will recommend you on what you can search for so that you can find the ideas you might love and you can see the top 5 keywords that you can explore here. Now let's talk about what makes business account 
different from the Pinterest personal account. Business accounts have a cover photo or a cover video. This makes your profile attractive to your followers. Compared to personal accounts, you can see that below their business name, you will see the number of monthly viewers instead of followers. Business accounts can display their business website in this section. You can see the verified badge before the link. This gives the impression to their followers that their brand is legit. If you browse their profile, instead of seeing boards, pins, and try tabs, you will see activity and community tabs. Business accounts also have the featured board section that you can see here, while personal accounts don't have this feature. Business accounts have Pinterest analytics. If you want to create brand awareness, drive more traffic to your website, then the analytics can help you track how much your metrics improve over time. Business accounts have the opportunity to label their pins with more context and a customer call to action button. These are called rich pins. It gives your photos extra information that is not available on regular pins. Rich pins show details like the price, availability, and where to buy the product. And for recipes, it includes detailed information about the recipes of the meal. Business accounts can promote their pins via ads. You can promote your pins and reach more target audience. You can target your audience based on keyword searches and based on demographics like gender, age, location, and income. And lastly, business accounts have the available feature of buyable pins. These pins allows brands to make it easier for their customers to purchase their products through the app. We do have a separate video for buyable pins. We'll talk about buyable pins in a deeper discussion on that lesson, so make sure to watch it. Also, a personal account has different terms of service compared to business accounts. Business account holders must agree to the terms of service for their accounts. There are features on Pinterest that are only available for business accounts. If you have a website, an e-commerce store, or a blog, then it's better to have a business account. The analytics can help you what pins related to your website get more traffic. Business Accounts provides your brand with the tools that you will need to start marketing on the platform. Determine your goal and purpose when you create your Pinterest account, so you can decide whether to use a Pinterest personal or a business account. Now that you know about Pinterest personal versus business account, we can now proceed to the next topic, Pinterest versus Instagram. I'll see you there. Hello guys, in this lesson, we're going to talk about Pinterest versus Instagram. Let's get started. Pinterest and Instagram are different social media platforms that are best used depending on your marketing goals and purposes. You should not market using the same strategy that you will apply on each platform. Each platform can help you grow your brand or business in their own unique ways. Regarding purpose, Instagram is best used for social media branding where people want to get to know more of your brand. Brands or influencers on Instagram upload photos or videos consistently to attract more people and get more engagement on their posts, therefore increasing their followers. Pinterest is best used for driving traffic to your website and it doesn't matter if you are just starting out and only have a few followers. As long as your pins can help your brand drive traffic to your website, then you can leverage Pinterest to help you drive more website traffic and increase your sales. You may notice the pins that you discover on Pinterest are mostly connected to a URL link to a blog or a website. Now let's talk about the users on each platform. Instagram users are looking for photos or videos from the brands or influencers that they follow. They want to get a personal experience with the people that they follow on Instagram. The photos that these users will see from their feed creates a feeling of connection with the brands or influencers on a personal level. Pinterest users make use of its search engine to discover ideas that they can apply to their daily lives. These can be visual content of recipes or DIY ideas that they can apply at home. They are looking for valuable visual content to learn something from, or they are researching for products that they would like to buy in the future. Now let's talk about images. On Instagram, the photos shared by brands or influencers are mostly people. These photos can be the behind the scenes of your brand and people appreciate it more as they want to find authentic images from the people that they follow. Also, 
people appreciate the images you upload when it shows more of the person's face. On Pinterest, the photos or pins are more of the product photos or infographics that people can learn something about that product. People use these pins to collect and serve as the reference. Pinterest users don't have to create their own photos, but instead, they can repin it. The images you find on Pinterest can be curated too, and you don't have to worry about posting your own pins. Shopping features On Instagram, people can use the shop button to browse from thumbnails of products they might be interested in. Once you click on a photo, you will see the original post and the owner of the post, so you can decide to follow them if you like their products. You may notice the shopping bag icon here. If you tap on it, you'll be able to see the product in the photo and the other products that this brand sells. If you like the product and tap on it, you can see this page where the photo of the product is shown, the name of the product, the price, and you can view a detailed description as you tap on the down arrow here. If you like to purchase it, just click on View on the website and you'll be redirected to their website and purchase the item there. Tapping on the photo will show you the product tag. It's also a feature on Instagram to allow people to view the price of the products and go directly to checkout. You can even view multiple product tags in just one photo. Another feature on Instagram to shop is through the Stories shopping sticker. Brands can also tag products in their stories. Since people engage more on stories, it's a great feature to tap on for marketers. People will be able to see your shopping sticker and click on it. On Pinterest, people can search for products and select product pins. It shows the price of the product, the description, and where to purchase that product. Another feature for searching for products that you can purchase online is using Pinterest visual search. If you use this icon, Pinterest will show you search results that is the same as the photo that you have searched for. This is helpful for people who want to search for similar products without typing in the keywords. Now that you know what makes Pinterest and Instagram unique, we can now proceed to the next topic, how to use this course. I'll see you there. Hello guys, welcome to the chapter, setting up your Pinterest account. In this lesson, we're going to talk about setting up your Pinterest personal account. Let's get started. From the previous lessons, I have mentioned that before creating a Pinterest account, you must determine what your goal is for using Pinterest. You can always start with a personal account if you're still figuring out what your plan is. Then you can start creating boards and adding pins to it. Then look for topics in a niche-related market to explore the pins that people share on Pinterest. Then start browsing Pinterest and see the features of the platform. It's so easy to create a personal account on Pinterest. Just visit Pinterest.com and you can scroll down below to see the section where you can sign up for a new account. Or you can just click on the sign up button instead. There are three ways for you to sign up with a personal Pinterest account. First, with an email address and your password. In this section, you can input any email address that is not your Gmail account. Then provide a password and input your age here. Then click Continue. Now you'll see a welcome message from Pinterest. Click Next to tell Pinterest what topics you are interested in. You can specify your gender or specify another gender that you prefer. Then click Next. Pick your language and country. Then click Next. This last step is where you can choose multiple topics that you are interested in. You can pick five or more. You may notice that once you pick a topic, the home feed is starting to show pins from the topics that you have clicked on. You can also uncheck topics here if you prefer not to see pins from that topic. Click Done. As you can see, Pinterest is preparing your home feed for you depending on the topics that you have chosen. If this is the first time you are seeing your home feed, all of these pins are from the topics related to what you have chosen earlier. You'll be able to see a brief instruction here on how to get the most out of Pinterest. Just click a pin you like, save it, then also get the mobile app, so you can use it on your mobile device. It shows you that the ideas in your feed are based on these topics. If you want to add more topics, just click this plus icon to add more topics for more pins related to it. Next, set up your profile. 
go to your profile and you can see that our profile is still empty. When you click on this down arrow, you have the options here that allow you to add another account or add a free business account. You can actually have multiple Pinterest accounts. Now click settings. You can edit your profile here, including your first name and last name. Your username that is set here is a random alphanumeric character. Your username is important, so set a username for your personal brand. As you can see in this section, you will have your own Pinterest URL with your username. You can share it if your URL is relevant, so you must change this to refer to your personal account. Then start writing a little about yourself in this text box, then click Done. Another way for you to sign up on a personal account on Pinterest is to use the option Continue with Google. It's a good idea to make sure that this Google account that you will use for Pinterest is only intended for your Pinterest profile. This will prevent you from losing your other social media accounts if ever your account gets hacked or you can't access it. Another way for you to sign up on Pinterest is to use your Facebook login. You can use your Facebook with your Pinterest account. You can connect your Facebook with your Pinterest account with the same credentials you have used on your Facebook profile to log into your Pinterest account. This option allows you to log into your Pinterest account faster. It is convenient, but your account is not safe too. If someone gets access to your Facebook account, then automatically they can get access to your Pinterest account too. The safest way to create a Pinterest account is to use an independent account that is intended only for Pinterest. Now that you have a Pinterest personal account, the next step you should do is find ideas for pins that you can save in your profile. Now that you know how to set up your Pinterest personal account, we can now proceed to the next topic, setting up your Pinterest business account. I'll see you there. Hello guys. In this lesson, we're going to talk about setting up a business account. Setting a Pinterest business account. Let's get started. In the first chapter, I have talked about how Pinterest is good for businesses. You have already seen a few features that are available on business accounts and are not available for personal accounts. There are many business owners, entrepreneurs, bloggers, and marketers who are using Pinterest to do their business inside the platform. Since Pinterest is a great platform that offers great opportunities for businesses, with other social media platforms like Facebook or Instagram, you can easily reach more people by just posting and sharing your content. If you're a marketer, people can discover your brand on these platforms once your posts get more reach and also if you have gained more followers. On Pinterest, having a business account can help you increase brand awareness even if you're just starting out and only have a few followers. This is because your pins have more chances of getting discovered by your potential audience who are interested in the niche that you are in. To start setting up your Pinterest business account, go to Pinterest.com and click on the sign up button. In this pop-up window, click on create a business account. You will see another window where you can enter an email address, create a password, and input your age. You may notice below that creating an account for your business means that you are agreeing to the business terms of service and privacy policy. Now you can see that you can set up your profile using this window right here. First, start with your business name. If you have a business website, you can type it in here, but you can choose not yet and add them later. Then choose your country or region, then click next. Now describe your brand. Select what's the focus of your brand here. You can choose from the options available, which are beauty, fashion, home, travel, food and drink, DIY and craft, health and fitness, education, design and art, events, or others. Now add a brand focus, then click next. Pinterest will customize some recommendations based on your details. Take note that you can only choose one of these options. You can choose from the options blogger, consumer's good, product or service, a contractor like a wedding photographer, interior designer, influencer, local retail store or service, online retail or marketplace on Shopify or Etsy shop, publisher or media, then click next. If you have chosen any of these except for the online store, you can see this page asking you if you will be interested in running ads. For the online store, 
you will see the page where it's asking you what platform do you use to sell your products. Options are Etsy, Shopify, WooCommerce, OpenCart, Squarespace Commerce, PrestaShop, Magneto, Zencart, or Wix stores. Just choose an option, then click Next. Now you will be asked if you would be interested in running ads on Pinterest, then click Next. You can choose where you would like to start. You have the option to share ideas, grow your audience, or showcase your brand. You can start creating pins to tell your brand story using images, videos, products, or links. You can also create an ad to reach more people and use tools to track your performance. You can build your profile to help people get to know your brand as you add your picture, an email address, location, and other information. Now that you know how to set up your business account, we can now proceed to the next topic, converting your personal Pinterest account to a business account. I'll see you there. Hello guys. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to convert personal to a business account. Let's get started. If you already have created and set up a Pinterest personal profile, and you have changed your mind as you have discovered that business accounts have more features that you can use compared to a personal profile, you can easily shift to a business account. Especially if you want to start promoting or marketing your business on Pinterest and you still have a personal account, you can convert that to a business account. So there's no need to create a new Pinterest account for business. Pinterest can help you get new ideas from any niche that you want to learn something from. If you have used your Pinterest personal account for quite some time now, you might have collected several pins related to topics that you liked, which serve as your reference. Having pins that belong to different types of niche will not be a good thing to see on your business profile, especially if you want to convert your Pinterest personal profile to a business profile. What you can do is set those pins to private so only you can see those pins that are not niche related to your business profile. Now let's take a look at some factors if you should convert your personal account to a business account. First, ask yourself, do you have a lot of followers now? If you already have gained followers and you don't want to lose them, then you can convert your personal to a business account. Next, will your business account use the same username as your personal profile? If you will be using the same username, like what you have used in your personal account, then it's good to convert it to a business account and keep your followers. Next, do you have marketing related pins that will be relevant to your niche as you convert to a business account? If yes, then you won't have a problem with losing your followers as they will still see the same business related niche pins in your profile. On the other hand, you might lose your followers if you have been saving pins for personal use. The reason that these people follow you is that they are interested in those personal pins that you have collected and converting to a business account to start sharing pins that are mostly for commercial purposes might make your followers end up unfollowing you. It's easy to convert any personal account to a business account. Just log into your Pinterest personal account, then click the down arrow on the upper right corner of your screen, then go to settings. From these menus, Click on Account Settings. Here you can see your email address, country, gender, login options, and account changes. In this section, you can see the Convert Account button. This allows you to convert this personal account to a business account. You'll be able to keep your existing boards and pins and easily switch to a business account. Now click this button. This page allows you to unlock the pro tools like Pinterest Analytics and Ads. You just need to click on the continue button. You may notice that you cannot change your email address since you are using your existing personal account and use that account to switch to a business account. If you want to use a different email address, then just log out and create a new account. By continuing, you are agreeing to the business terms of service and privacy policy. Now click this button. You have successfully converted your personal account to a business account. You may notice that your dashboard is different from your personal Pinterest account dashboard and you are now seeing a business hub. You can view your monthly viewers and followers here. You can also see the stats for your latest pins and promote them to grow your audience. You can also see your recent ads to see how your ads are performing here. Here you can create your pin to start reaching people with your pins. You can also add your website and connect other accounts here. 
you may notice in this section that you have new menus added to your home feed. You can easily access a menu to create a pin or create an ad. You also have menus like the analytics and the ads menu. Having a business account gives you more features compared to a personal account. You can easily convert your existing personal account to a business account without losing your pins and boards and also the followers you have gained over time. If you have changed your mind, it's so easy to go back to having a personal account. Just go to the settings menu, click on account settings, scroll down until you see account changes. You can stop using business features and click convert to a personal account. Now that you know about converting your Pinterest personal account to a business account, we can now proceed to the next chapter, Pinterest profile optimization. I'll see you there. Hello guys, welcome to the chapter, Pinterest profile optimization. In this lesson, we're going to talk about adding keywords in your profile name. Let's get started. Keywords are important on Pinterest. If you're using Pinterest to increase brand awareness and you want people to discover your brand and your content, then you must also include the right keywords in your profile name. Your profile name is another part of your Pinterest account where you can optimize your profile with the right keywords making your brand searchable on the platform. You need to tell Pinterest that your account name is related to the keywords that people in your niche are searching for. You may notice that when you search for keyword phrases on Pinterest's search text box, Pinterest shows you recommended accounts with that specific keyword or keyword phrases included in their name. Now you see that keywords are also important to be added in your profile name. To add keywords in your profile name, access your Pinterest business account. Go to the settings menu, then click the edit profile. In the display name field, type in your business profile name and add the keywords that are relevant to your niche. You can separate keyword phrases using this character, the long line symbol, or a plus icon, or any symbol that will clearly separate your keywords in your profile. Doing this will increase your chances of getting discovered by people who are typing in keywords that match the keywords in your account name. So ask yourself, what keywords do you have to include after your business name to help your brand get discovered on Pinterest? I have shown you sample profiles on Pinterest having multiple keywords or keyword phrases added to their Pinterest profile name. So how do they choose the keywords they add in their account name? First. You can use Pinterest search engine to look for inspiration. You can make use of the Pinterest search engine to look for keywords that Pinterest would recommend you to add to the keywords that you have typed in. The more keywords you type in, the more additional long tail keywords it will recommend you. You can take note of those recommended keywords and save them on your notepad. So you will have a list of keywords that you can choose from and decide what keyword you can use. Also. Pinterest may recommend account names with the words that use that keyword you have typed in. You can click on the all account named including your keyword. So explore those business names. Look at how they add keywords in their account names. So you can have an idea of what you can add to your profile name. You can take a look at some business profiles with added keywords in their profile name. You can take a look at these business profiles and see how they constructed the added keywords in their profile name. Next. Use keyword phrases regarding what services or products your business offers. You may notice that most of the keywords that some of the optimized profile accounts include after their profile names are what people expect them to share on their profile. It can be a brief description of what their business do and offer. Let's take a look at a few examples. For people who have blogs, let's search for the keyword blogging. And you can see that Pinterest recommends a list of additional keywords that we can add to our search. Let's choose blogging for money. Here are the pins that rank high on the keywords blogging for money. Let's click a pin. Take a look at the account name. This user added the keyword phrases work from home jobs, money from home legit, and for mom. The keywords that this blogger added to her account name are phrases that people who are interested in learning how to make money use. Their niche-specific keywords is all about making money from home. It even shows their specific target audience, which are the moms who are always at home. If you take a look at the profile names of the top-ranked pins, 
they all have added keywords to their profile name. For accounts that focus on recipes, let's type in healthy recipes. From these top ranked pins, we can see that their account names also included keywords or blog titles that people who want to lose weight would be interested in. Taking a look at this account name, you can easily determine what type of content and niche any Pinterest user can discover from browsing their profile, which are recipes that are easy to prepare. Some entrepreneurs overlook adding keywords in their profile. It is important to include additional keyword phrases in your profile name. This can help your target audience discover your brand more as they search those keywords that you have added in your account name. Now that you know about adding keywords in your profile name, we can now proceed to the next topic, crafting your bio properly. I'll see you there. Hello guys, in this lesson, we're going to talk about crafting your bio properly. Let's get started. Your Pinterest account will attract potential audiences who will discover your pins as they search for keywords that match your content on your Pinterest account. You can craft your Pinterest bio with a few sentences telling your viewers all about your brand. The limit for your Pinterest bio is 160 characters, so you need to take time on crafting your bio properly. You have to make sure that what you put in your bio is relevant and your audience can easily know your brand as they read your bio. First, you have to keep it short. You don't have to make use of all the 160 characters to write your bio and tell people about your business in very detailed information. People don't actually bother reading a lot on Pinterest. Remember that it is a search engine for discovering visual content. Take note that your bio will help your account and content get discovered by people who search for keywords that you use in your profile. So be direct and don't beat around the bush. You can start with action words on what your business can do. Next, tell people who you are. Explain what your business is all about in a few sentences or in phrases. First, you can describe who you are or what your brand is. You don't have to write, I am a social media marketer who has helped aspiring freelance social media marketers to learn the basics of social media. You only have 160 characters to craft your bio, so include the important ones. Be direct on telling people what you can offer them. You can tell who your business clients are and how you can help your customers. These are the most important details that you want to let your profile visitors know about your brand. Next, add keywords. Depending on your niche, choose the best keywords or keyword phrases that you can include in writing your bio. As you can see in this example, this business account was recommended by Pinterest as I type in the SEO marketing strategies keyword in the search box. You may notice in their crafted bio, it's filled with rich keywords that their target followers are more likely to search for. If you try to search for a Pinterest marketing strategy keyword, this business account's pin is still being recommended by Pinterest. Now let's try another keyword phrase from their bio. This keyword phrase, traffic strategy for beginners, returns more pins from different accounts which probably ranked high on that keyword phrase. But as we scroll down, you can see that this account is still in the top search results of Pinterest, so more and more people can still discover your pins. Next, add a call to action. If you offer free courses or free downloads, like a free checklist, then you can add the link to your bio. People like to get free stuff. When you include a link to the freebie that you're giving away, they are more likely to go to that link. This way, you can even ask for their email address in exchange for the free course or checklist that they can receive. And that's a great strategy to offer them promotions through email marketing. And also, you'll gain more website traffic. Next, include a tagline. Your business tagline must be unique and catchy. It already shows a brief description of what you are and what you can offer. Use keyword phrases that your potential audience in your niche will be searching for and would be attracted to this tagline. Being unique is what will make you stand out from tons of competitors on your niche. Having a properly crafted bio is important for your brand. It will help you attract the right target audience that you want to show your content to. Write your bio without being too cliche. Just be yourself and convey the message in simple terms that your brand will offer your clients. 
Now that you know about crafting your bio properly, we can now proceed to the next topic, claiming your website on your Pinterest account. I'll see you there. Hello guys, in this lesson, we're going to talk about claiming your website. Let's get started. Pinterest is a great platform to promote your brand. You need to link your website with your Pinterest account by claiming it. Claiming your website on Pinterest is essential for having a Pinterest business account. It will show people that your business is authentic and legit. You want to drive traffic to your website using your Pinterest pins. And you will increase your chances of getting more website traffic once you claim your website on Pinterest. It's so easy to claim your website on Pinterest. Just log into your Pinterest business profile and go to the settings menu. From these menus, click on the claim menu. You can see the claim your website here. Just input your website in this text box so that you will get attribution and analytics for your content. Now click claim. There are two ways you can claim your website. First, you can add an HTML tag here. When you choose this option, you will see a meta tag that you will need to copy and paste it on the head section of your website's index.html file. Copy it and you can paste it first on a notepad. The other way is to download a file and upload it to your website's root directory. Once you place your meta tag on your website and submit this form, Pinterest will review your application first and you can expect an email after 24 hours. If you have a WordPress site, then you can easily use a plugin to paste the meta tag. First, you need to install and activate the Yoast SEO plugin. Once it's installed and activated, go to the Yoast menu, then click Social. Under the Facebook tab, the Add Open Graph Metadata must be enabled. Then under the Pinterest tab, paste the meta tag in this Pinterest confirmation field. Then click Save Changes. Another way that you can add your meta tag is to use the plugin Insert Headers and Footers. Install and activate it. Once it's activated, click on Settings. Then choose Insert Headers and Footers. Under the Header text box, paste the meta tag here. Then click Save. Now go back to your Pinterest settings. Then click Next. We already have added the meta tag on our WordPress site, so you need to submit this for review. Pinterest will still check your site if it matches the meta tag that you used. You will receive a confirmation via email within 24 hours. Then click Submit. You can see here that to track your ads drive conversion events on your claim site, you need to install the Pinterest tag. Click the Install Tag button. Now you will be redirected to this page. Once your website is approved, you will be able to see it under the Claim menu that your website is verified. You can only claim one website for each Pinterest account. So if you have multiple websites, you cannot link all of it to one Pinterest account. Claiming your website tells Pinterest that your business profile is legit and it should prioritize your content to be shown on the platform. Once your business website has been verified on Pinterest, your pins that you have uploaded on your website domain will be linked with your Pinterest profile and the pins that people will see on their feed as they discover your pin will show your profile photo and your profile name below the pin, like in this example. Now that you know about claiming your website, we can now proceed to the next topic, connecting Instagram and YouTube on Pinterest. I'll see you there. Hello guys, in this lesson, we're going to talk about connecting Instagram and YouTube on Pinterest. Let's get started. In the previous lesson, we have claimed our website on Pinterest. As your website has been successfully verified, promoting your content on Pinterest is going to help your business increase the chances that more people can discover your brand and your pins. These pins are linked to your website that you claimed on Pinterest, so you will be able to track the metrics of those pins that are linked to your website. Not only it is important to claim your website, but if you want to increase your brand's reach, you must also connect other accounts from other platforms like Instagram and YouTube. Once you connect your Instagram and YouTube accounts on Pinterest, the pins that you share from those accounts to your Pinterest account will help you get tons of exposure. If you just share your Pinterest pin on Instagram without claiming your Instagram account on Pinterest, you can only see the stats of that pin that you shared. 
if someone clicks or saves that pin on their Pinterest board, you won't be able to track the clicks or saves on that particular pin. But if you claim your Instagram account, you will be able to see the actions taken on that pin and associate that data to your Pinterest profile. Also, the pins will be counted as part of your monthly viewers seen on your business profile. It's easy to claim other accounts on Pinterest. Just log into your Pinterest account where you want to claim your Instagram and YouTube accounts. Then click Settings. Click on the Claim menu. Scroll down and you will see the option to claim other accounts. Pinterest will attribute pins from your claimed accounts. The good thing here is that you will also get stats about each pin even if it's outside Pinterest. Since your Instagram and YouTube accounts are linked to your Pinterest account, you will be able to see additional stats with the help of these accounts that you have claimed on your Pinterest account. Once your Instagram account is successfully claimed on Pinterest, you can pin your Instagram post on Pinterest. Posting content on Instagram alone will give your photos or videos a short lifespan. Once you pin your content using your Instagram post, the lifespan of your content from Instagram will be much longer. Pins on Pinterest last longer compared to other social media accounts. This means that a pin shared on Pinterest is the most active within the first week. It can last for 3 to 4 months. While the lifespan of Instagram post is about 48 hours. Now your YouTube content gets 50% of its views within the first week that it is posted. This means that your pinned photos from your Instagram or videos from YouTube can drive more traffic to your Instagram or YouTube content longer compared to their average lifespan on their platforms. Now let's try to claim our Instagram account. Before you click claim, you must be logged in to your Instagram account that you want to link to your Pinterest account. If you have other Instagram accounts, like in this example, I need to log out of this account and log in to my preferred Instagram account to claim on Pinterest. Now click claim, then click authorize. As you can see, we have successfully claimed our Instagram account and you can see that the claim button changed to unclaim. If you have an Etsy account, you can also claim it here too. Etsy is a website where you can purchase products and also sell online. So if you have an Etsy account, Pinterest would be a good platform to promote your products as well. Like in this example, this pin is linked to an Etsy account. When people click on it, they will be redirected to this Etsy site where people can purchase this product. Now let's check out an Instagram pin. When people click on your Instagram post using the pin you shared on your Pinterest account, you will get more Instagram followers. People are going to discover your brand on Instagram with the help of your Pinterest pin. Take a look at the pin linked to a YouTube account. When people click on this pin, they will be redirected to the YouTube video. And those people who clicked on your pin that is linked to your YouTube video can be your additional subscribers on your YouTube account. Now you can see that your Pinterest pins linked to your other accounts can help you increase your Instagram followers and also your YouTube subscribers. Now let's claim our YouTube account. First, you need to be logged in to your YouTube account that you want to claim on your Pinterest account. Then go to your Pinterest settings. Under the YouTube section, click the claim button. Then click this button. Now you have successfully claimed your YouTube account on your Pinterest account. Connecting your other accounts on Pinterest will help you grow your other accounts with the help of Pinterest pins. Your pins will be attributed to your business profile. Any Pinterest pins that will redirect people to your Instagram or YouTube accounts will be associated with your Pinterest account. Now that you know about connecting Instagram and YouTube on Pinterest, we can now proceed to the next topic, optimizing your profile and cover photo. I'll see you there. Hello guys! In this lesson, we're going to talk about optimizing your profile and cover photo. Let's get started. If you're promoting your brand on Pinterest, you would like your Pinterest business profile to stand out and attract more Pinterest users to view your profile. Optimizing your profile photo and your profile cover helps your brand create a great impression with your followers and profile viewers. Pinterest is a visual search engine where people look for visual content that they are interested in. When you are looking for pins, you want to see the profile of the owner of that pin. You want to look at the person who owns that Pinterest pin. 
So as a content creator, you must upload your photo to show people that you are a person that people would want to follow. This means that as much as possible, you must avoid uploading a logo. People want to follow real people on social media platforms. Your Pinterest followers are not your customers. They are expecting to connect with a person rather than some business brand with a logo trying to sell them something. To change your profile photo, go to your profile and then click Settings. Under Edit Profile, you will see your photo inside this circle. If you haven't uploaded any photo yet, this circle will have a gray color and you won't see any photo here. Click the Change button, change your picture, then choose a photo. It's also best to rename your profile photo the same as your brand name. As you can see, my brand name is Kate Smith. So my profile photo is also named Kate Smith. Now click Done. When we go to our profile, you can see a professional businesswoman that you want to follow. If you are a blogger, a coach, or an influencer, then it's good to use your best headshot as your profile photo. You have to choose the photo that captures your best pose and you must be facing front so that people can clearly see your face. And your face should occupy at least 50 to 70% of the circle dedicated to your photo. So make sure your headshot is clearly seen inside the circle. You don't want your face cut off as it is not positioned properly inside the circle. Like in this example, you can only see the body of the person and not their face. If you're a famous brand selling your products, that more people are expecting to purchase those products, then your brand's logo is your best option to upload as your profile photo. Since your brand is already famous for the products that you offer, you must use your brand's logo. When uploading a photo, it should be the best photo quality that you must upload. If you upload a low quality photo, your profile photo will be pixelated. Next, your photo should be your brand's personality. You can pick the colors that represent your brand. It should be the dominant colors that will represent your brand. Those dominant colors that you choose for your brand can also be used in your pins and boards, and that will look great in your profile. Now let's go to the cover photo of your business profile. The recommended size for a Pinterest profile cover is at least 800 pixels wide by 450 pixels tall, and the ratio is 16 by 9. Videos must be at least 4 seconds long, up to a maximum of 5 minutes. If you haven't saved any pins yet, you won't be able to see default photos here as your cover photo. And if you haven't uploaded a custom cover for your profile and you have already collected and saved pins, Pinterest will use the pins that you have collected as multiple photos here, like in this example cover of a business account. These are the pins in their profile, and you can see in the cover that a collection of their pins is used as their cover. If you want to upload a custom cover, you can use a cover photo or a cover video. It is important that you upload a cover photo or a video that will represent your brand. A cover video is more attractive than just a cover photo. It will make your page visitors stay and watch a short video and they can see what your brand can offer. If you don't upload a cover photo or video on your profile, you will have a random mixture of photos here. And having random pins as your cover, won't be appealing to your visitors and your potential followers. To add a cover in your profile, just click the Add Cover button above your profile photo. You can drag and drop your chosen photo here or click Upload from your computer. Remember that you must use a high-resolution image and PNG, JPEG, and GIFs are the supported formats up to 10 MB in size. Having an optimized profile and cover photo or video on your Pinterest business profile is great for your branding. If you want to impress your followers, you must make an effort to upload the photos that will make your profile stand out. Now that you know about optimizing your profile and cover photo, we can now proceed to the next chapter, Pinterest Pins. I'll see you there. Hello guys, welcome to the chapter, Pinterest Pins. In this lesson, we're going to talk about what are Pinterest Pins. Let's get started. People who are using Pinterest are looking for ideas about any topic they can think of. When people use the Pinterest search engine to look for ideas, inspiration, recipes, blogs about certain topics, the search results will show them tons of vertical photos on their Pinterest feed. These are referred to as Pinterest pins. 
Pins are visual bookmarks that you can collect and save for later use as a reference for your future projects. You must treat Pinterest pins differently from other social media platforms where you share photos. Pins can help brands get their content discovered, and pins are more likely to be saved and shared by other Pinterest users if it has prominent text overlays. These text overlays help people learn what your pin is all about. Most pins are linked to blogs, articles, or e-commerce websites, so it's a great platform to increase web traffic. When people browse their feed to look for content, they are searching for pins that catches their attention. As a content creator, you must make your pin stand out from the other pins that are shown on the search results. Now let's take a look at different types of pins that you can see on Pinterest. How-to guides. This is a great type of content where people want to know how they can learn to build something. You can search for any niche of how-tos or tutorials. You will find tons of pins that offer tutorials from certain topics. The pins that stand out from these how-to tutorials are pins with images that show the end result of the tutorial. Like in this example, it shows how to organize pots and pans. You can see in this photo the end result that you can get from their tutorial. And it's also a great idea to use multiple photos that will show the different results that people can get from following the guide. As a viewer, you want to see how this guide will help you. Do it yourself. With DIYs, these pins can showcase products that are used for ideas or projects like organizing your home hacks. When people see these pins, they will have the urge to purchase these products as they have seen different hacks that they can try on from these ideas. Food or recipes. Food pins are loved by people who are looking for new recipes to try. Most of the time, people choose a food pin depending on how good the food photo is. Food pins that have more clicks and saves shows the top view angle of the food plus a good text overlay. The good thing here is that people who are looking for ingredients can easily view the measurements in this section. Infographics. These are graphics that contain information. That is why you can view it with so many details on the pin. The only prominent text on the pin is the title or the headline of the infographics. As you can see in this example, it's a guide to self-care. It shows a step-by-step -step guide and a simple explanation of each step. Here's another example of physical health tips that are good to know. Instead of reading the whole article, the infographics are much easier to read and understand. It shows a few tips so you can easily finish reading the details. Now that you know what are pins, we can now proceed to the next topic, how to create pins. I'll see you there. Hello guys! In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to create pins. Let's get started. Your Pinterest pins must be customized to capture your audience's attention. There are more than 200 billion pins that are saved on Pinterest. If you want to capture your target audience's attention, you must customize your pins to make your pin stand out among the other pins that Pinterest users will be able to see once they search for a keyword that matches their pin. Pinterest pins are vertical images. Pins have text overlays that will tell people what your pin is about. The pins that you're going to create must have a ratio of 2 is to 3 and any image size will be ideal as long as the aspect ratio is followed. You can use 600 by 900 pixels or 1000 by 1500 pixels. They are both maintaining a 2 is to 3 aspect ratio. The pins that you will see on your feed will have a width of 238 pixels and the length will be adjusted depending on the image's height. When you click on the pin, it will expand to a width of 735 pixels. There are several ways that you can create Pinterest pins on the platform. You may find it on one of the menus in this section, then click Create Pin. The other way is while you're on the business home feed, you will see the Create Pin button here under your account name. On your profile, you can also create a pin here. Just click on the Add button, then choose the Pin option on the menu. Whatever way you choose, you will still get to this page where you can upload the pin from your drive and add the pin's details. Now let me show you how to create a pin. 
upload the file from your drive, then click on the pencil icon to edit the pin. Under the aspect ratio, choose 2 is to 3. You may notice that the photo was cropped and it focused on the middle of the image. If you click on the image, you can adjust it to the right or to the left of the image to crop the important part of the image that you want to see as your pin. You can also explore the adjust options in this section if you want to apply these to your pin. Or you can change an image here. If we click on the star icon, you will be able to add the logo to your pin. You can even adjust the size of the logo, adjust the margins, adjust the position of the logo, and even add a color fill. Now click on the A icon to add a text. You can choose the style of the text overlay that you're going to use in this pin. Adjust the size and the color of the text. You can click on the background option and click no background fill and this will show you a fill to your text. You can even click on this icon to make it transparent. You can even adjust the position of the background fill, adjust the margins, and also the alignment. When you're done, click update changes. Now you must optimize your pins and fill in the details so that your pin can be searchable on Pinterest. First add a title. Next, you have to tell everyone what your pin is all about. Then add a destination link to where you can redirect users who will click on your pin. Then click publish. Now you need to save it on a board. It's like a folder to organize your pins. Once you have created or have chosen a board, you must click publish again. Now we have successfully created a pin. Now you have the options to see your pin or promote the pin. Once you click on your pin, You'll be able to view it as any Pinterest user would see your pin. Now you can click save. When you go to your profile, you'll be able to see your created pin here. Remember that when creating pins, you must use high resolution photos. Maintain the aspect ratio of 2 is to 3, like a 600 by 900 pixel image. Use text overlays that stand out from other pins. Your text should be big enough to be readable. Our eyes get attracted to text that stand out from all the pins. Apply the colors like the background of your text and font colors that will match your brand's color. Now that you know how to create pins, you can now proceed to the next topic, optimizing your pins. I'll see you there. Hello guys, in this lesson, we're going to talk about optimizing your pins. Let's get started. As a content creator, you must be able to optimize your pins to make your content discoverable. There are millions of Pinterest pins that are available on the platform. You must make a way for your Pinterest pins to be shown on the first few results of the keyword searches. That way, your pins have higher chances of getting discovered by your potential audiences. They might even check out your profile and discover more of your Pinterest pins and be redirected to your website, increasing your website traffic. Like Google, Pinterest is a search engine. For your pins to get discovered by your target audiences, you must apply SEO on your pins. You can optimize your pins using good images, text overlays, and also adding details to your pin. And that includes your pin's title and description. Pin title. Your pin title is what your viewers or followers will see on your home feed. A pin's title has a limit of 100 characters. You can add keywords in your title and it will fit the 100 character title limit. As you can see in this example, as people see your pin, they will be able to see the pin's title under the pin, but only the first 30 to 50 characters will be seen on their feed. So make sure to make the most out of those first 30 to 50 characters that will be visible on the home feed. A pin's title adds context to your image. This will help Pinterest when your pin will be shown in the user's search results. Use the keywords that you think your target audiences are more likely to click on. You don't have to use the same information that you will include in your description and carefully choose relevant keywords to include in your title rather than using more keywords to stuff your pin title. Next, pin description. Carefully write your pin's description using words that are easy to digest. Your description can add to the deciding factor of your viewers if they will click on your pin and pin descriptions have a character limit of 500 characters, so you can easily add in keywords on your pin description. It is recommended to craft a longer description for about 300 characters. 
Longer descriptions will have more chances of getting repinned. You can also use call to actions inside your pinned description. Some call to action examples that you can include in your description are learn more, buy now, check out, or download. Use visually appealing images. Use a photo that will be relevant to your content. Make sure to use or create high quality images. If you're not a graphic designer, you can download free stock images that are of high quality, but they're free to download. You can use Pixabay to look for images that you can use. Text overlays. Your pins have text overlays that can serve as your headline. The text should be more prominent by using a bigger font size. The text on your pins should be the focus of the viewer and not just your image. When the focus is on the image, it shows that the text of your pin is smaller and your pin won't stand out from the other pins. Also, the colors that you must use on your text overlay must be the colors that you have chosen to brand yourself. These can be a combination of 3-5 to five colors that you will be using on your pins. Let's take a look at these examples. First, this profile has chosen the shade of pink as the color branding of their pins. You may notice the text overlays also have the same font style. It looks good in their profile as the colors and text are uniform. Next, this profile uses a different color palette combination. This has the shade of green with dark blue font colors and orange fill for their website link. The pins are stunning since they are all uniform in color and font style. In this next example, this profile uses a different shade. Most of their pins have a shade of blue and yellow. It also looks good in their profile having a uniform design, color combination, and text overlays. Optimizing your pins will help your content get discovered, increase your website traffic, and also help you grow your monthly views. Now that you know about optimizing your pins, we can now proceed to the next topic, using video pins. I'll see you there. Hello guys! In this lesson, we're going to talk about using video pins. Let's get started. Pinterest started to implement videos around 2016 so that people can enjoy the ability to play videos when they click or tap on a video pin. Today, businesses can upload their videos on Pinterest as video pins to attract more people to click on their pin, get to know their brand, and also promote their brand. You can upload videos on your profile. Like any regular Pinterest pin, you must add a title, description, and include a link to your website. With video pins, you can share more and bring still photos to life. Let's talk about the benefits of having video pins for your branding. First, brand awareness. Videos can help a brand's content to be discovered by their target audiences, since videos stand out from other pins which are still photos. Videos that pinners are discovering on Pinterest inspire them to take action. Since people are looking for ideas and inspiration from the Pinterest search results, watching short videos on the platform gives them a different emotion compared to just still photos. Next, storytelling. With video pins, you can easily tell a story in just a few seconds or minutes of the video. You must hook your audience within the first 3 seconds of the video to attract them to stay and watch your video pin. It's also great to include a logo or a watermark on your video to show a branded video pin. But you must avoid placing a watermark or a logo on the bottom right part of your video. Next, showcase your products. Pinners are more likely to stay and watch videos that demonstrate how to use a product or show activities where the products that the brand sells can be used. Let's take a look at an example product from this brand. When people discover this video pin, pinners can view the apparel of the brand TLF where this person who demonstrates a workout is using as his gym clothes. Pinners who are looking for workout video pins can discover this pin and they can be inspired to work out using the apparel that this person also uses in the video. Next. Video pins are eye-catching. People love watching videos. If they are looking for DIY projects or how-to videos, pinners will choose video pins over photos since they would like to see the step-by-step -step process on how to build a project. Also, if you love to travel, you want to see videos of people who have been to beautiful places that you're planning to travel soon. Here are some tips that you can apply to video pins. 
Use a captivating cover image, like thumbnails on YouTube. Videos with good thumbnails are getting more clicks since they are using a strong cover photo that will attract their audiences to watch their video. If you have no thumbnails available for your video pin, you can create your video with a text overlay showing the title of the video. This way, you can choose that video image as your cover image when you upload your video on your profile and choose it as your cover image. This is the section where you can choose a cover image inside your video. But if you want to create a thumbnail for your video pin, it is much better. When you upload a video, you can just click on this button to upload the thumbnail for that video. Focus on the video rather than the audio. Most of the time, people watch videos on Pinterest with the sound off. People who are watching recipes can understand and still follow the steps for cooking the meal without the sound. You just need to add captions or text on your videos if you need to tell your viewers and let them know what step you are doing. That way, your viewers can still follow your procedure. Next, inspire people to try something new. People on Pinterest are already searching for ideas that they can try. If you create how-to videos, then your video pins are more likely to be watched by your viewers. These types of videos will urge the people to take action rather than just following a pin that will link to a blog or article. Video pins are great for sparking new ideas like do-it-yourself home hacks or how-to videos like making recipes. Creating video content and promoting them on Pinterest as video pins is a great strategy for your brand to get noticed by your target audiences since videos get more clicks and engagement. Now that you know about using video pins on Pinterest, we can now proceed to the next topic, saving pins using the browser button. I'll see you there. Hello guys. In this lesson, we're going to talk about saving pins using the browser button. Let's get started. Pinterest users are not only using Pinterest search engine to look for ideas and inspiration. They can be browsing the web, looking for new ideas like recipes, home projects, fashion ideas, or lifestyle improvement ideas. They might find some images on the web that they might be interested in saving as pins. But most images that you can find on the web don't have a save pin button like what you see on Pinterest. If people want to save any image that they find interesting on the web, they have to manually save it by making a right click on the image, then save it. Some blogs or websites include social buttons like Pinterest, Facebook, or Twitter that website visitors can click on if they find their images interesting and they would want to save the images as pins. Using a Pinterest button will allow website visitors to save it like they're on Pinterest. As you can see in this example, there's a new window where we can create a board, then save the image as a Pinterest pin inside the board. Then as you save it as a pin, you can see the pin here. But what if a website doesn't have a Pinterest social button embedded on their blog? What you can do is download a browser extension called the Pinterest Save button. The browser extension allows you to hover on any image that you want to save as one of your Pinterest pins. Also, it has a visual discovery technology that allows you to instantly discover similar ideas on Pinterest that are visually the same. The Pinterest browser button is available on different browsers such as Chrome, Firefox, or Microsoft Edge. Now let's try to download the extension for Chrome. Just go to the Chrome Web Store and search for Pinterest. Then choose Pinterest Save button. If you're using Firefox or Microsoft Edge, you can just do the same and follow the steps and look for the Pinterest browser button. This Chrome extension will now allow you to save the things that you find on the web. Now click Add Extension. Once you install the Chrome extension, you will see a quick overview of how to use it and save images. First, we need to click on the Pinterest icon in their browser. Click these three dots and choose More Tools and click on Extensions. So here are the extensions added to our Chrome browser. As you can see, the Pinterest Save button is here. We want the Pinterest icon in this bar, so click the extensions icon here and enable the pin icon for the pin extension to be available in this section. Now let's try to use the Pinterest browser button. If you want to look for products to buy in the future, then we can save the image using the Pinterest browser button. You can just hover on any image here 
and you can see the Pinterest save button on top of the image. Now click on the red save button. Now you will see this window. You can create a board, then type in the board name, then click on the create button, then save it. You will see that our images have been saved on Pinterest. Now let's take a look at another feature of the Pinterest browser button. Let's hover our mouse again over the image. You can see this icon, which is the virtual search feature. This icon is the visual discovery technology allowing you to discover similar ideas on Pinterest. If you click on it, it will give you search results of pins that you may also find on Pinterest. This will allow you to search for photos the same as the image that you clicked on. From the search results, you can also use the Pinterest browser's button feature, and you can save it or use the icon the visual search feature. You can keep on using the visual search feature to land on the image that you like. Saving pins outside Pinterest's platform can be possible when you use the Pinterest browser button. When you're browsing the web and find new places to visit, you can save the images on your travel board. If you're looking for recipes to cook later, you can save it on your board as well. If you're looking for house ideas to try, you can also save them on your board. And for articles that you'll want to read later, you can save them too. And lastly, for saving how-to guides that can give you ideas to do later, you can save it on your board as well. Now that you know about saving pins using the browser button, we can now proceed to the next topic, rich pins. I'll see you there. Hello guys, in this lesson, we're going to talk about rich pins. Let's get started. Rich pins are a type of organic pin that will help you sync information from your website or your blog to your pins. The great thing about rich pins is that you don't have to keep on updating your pin's description on Pinterest or any details in your pin from your Pinterest profile. Take note that you must have successfully claimed the website that you want to link to your Pinterest account and you want to apply the rich pins. Whenever you update the details like the price of a product, the stock availability, or product information, your pin's details will be automatically updated too. You can easily identify rich pins when you see extra information on a pin. Let's take a look at an example. Search for any keywords and choose a pin. Rich pins will have descriptions in the section and below. Since this pin doesn't show any extra information, it doesn't have any rich pins for this recipe pin. Let's take a look at a different pin. As you can see, this pin has a description in this section and it also has the same description below. In this middle section, you can see the recipe ingredients of this rice recipe. As a pinner, it will be easier for you to prepare this meal without going outside Pinterest. If you are looking for a product, you will be able to see the price here. If you check out the description of this pin and compare the description in their e-commerce site, only a snippet of their description is displayed on the pin. If you count the characters of this description, you can see that this description is about 500 characters, and that is the limit of pin descriptions, so it's the only detail that was included in the pin's description. Rich pins are available as soon as your account gets approved. If you want to apply for rich pins, you need to make sure that your website has been claimed successfully. Once it's approved, you can apply for rich pins. This will allow you to sync your data properly. If you have a product, article, or any recipe content on your blog site, you will need to be adding rich meta tags to those web pages. After that, you need to validate your website using the Rich Pins Validator link. This is the page where you can validate your blog or your article. Following these instructions, first you need to copy and paste the URL where you want to apply your Rich Pins. Once your Rich Pins are approved, you will see the congratulations message here and it tells you that your pins are approved and are on Pinterest. Here you can see that rich pins are enabled, also the site name and fav icon here. Below you will see the data, like the details of the article rich pin and description. Rich pins are designed to spread brand awareness and add context to your posts. It gets the website's metadata to show it automatically on Pinterest so there's no need to manually update your pin's description or details as it will be automatically updated once you update it on your website. Now that you know about rich pins, we can now proceed to the next chapter, Pinterest boards. I'll see you there. Hello guys, 
Welcome to the chapter Pinterest Boards. In this lesson, we're going to talk about what are Pinterest Boards. Let's get started. Pins are the essential element that people search for on Pinterest. For pins to be saved in one's profile, it needs to be placed and saved inside a board. The pins that you create or repin can be organized inside Pinterest Boards by category or purpose. Pinterest boards are a folder-like collection of pins that have their own theme. Pinterest users are using the platform to search for inspiration from the products that they want to buy, ideas for home improvement, preparing for an event, or learning how to make new recipes. There are millions of pins that are available for them to find and discover, and those pins are all saved inside a Pinterest board. The way you set up your Pinterest boards will affect where your created pins or the pins that you have repinned will appear on Pinterest search results. Boards are a way to get those pins discovered by pinners who are searching for keywords related to that pin. There's no pin without boards. It is also possible for pinners to follow specific Pinterest boards from a Pinterest user without them following the profile. A Pinterest user can make multiple boards to save their pins that will belong to different themes or categories. If you're new, it is recommended to create boards from at least 10 boards to a maximum of 20 boards. As time passes, you can gradually increase your boards depending on the need to create more themes for your pins. Pinterest recommends that you should avoid creating Pinterest boards in bulk. Creating boards in bulk will trigger Pinterest to detect this activity as spam. Now let me show you how to create a Pinterest board. Go to your profile and look for the plus icon. Then click create a board. Input the board name and you can see here an optional secret board. And if you want to keep your boards private, you can select this option. Now click the create button. You will see a window where Pinterest is showing you recommended pins that are relevant to your board. You may notice that pins that are shown here are the pins that contain the title the same as the name that you placed in your board. As I have saved a pin, Pinterest will find more ideas that I can save for this board. As you click on a pin, you can view more suggested pins under more ideas. This saves you the time of searching for more ideas related to your board. When we click on a pin, we can easily save it on our newly created board. Once we create a board, it is important to add details to that board. This can help our pins get discovered by our target audiences if it matches their keyword search from the keywords that we place in our board's details. Click on the Edit Board. You may notice that these details are not available to be filled up once you create a new board. So it is important to edit your board every time you create a new board. You'll be able to add a cover board, edit your board name, add a description, add or remove dates, add collaborators, Keep your board private or personalize this board in your home feed. Pinterest boards will help your business boost traffic for your blog, website, or e-commerce store. The details, such as the board name and description that you will add in your board, are the details that will impact how the pins you created on that board will show up on every user's Pinterest search results. Now that you know what are Pinterest boards, we can now proceed to the next topic creating a board within a board. I'll see you there. Hello guys. In this lesson, we're going to talk about creating a board within the board. Let's get started. Organizing your pins is possible when you create boards. Boards can have different categories, but a general category can have more subcategories. To help you make your boards look clean on your profile, you can add Pinterest sections inside your boards. This will be useful if you have multiple subcategories per board. Pinterest sections are like a board within a board. A main board can have multiple sections, but a section cannot contain any section under it. There are boards that must contain different sections to make it easier to organize boards into subsections. It also helps pinners discover your pins as they navigate your boards. To add a section, choose a board. Then click the plus icon below and it will give you the options to create a pin, add section, and a date. Click the add section. Then add a name for the section. 
you can only add the name for the Pinterest section. Now let's save pins to our Pinterest board sections. You can use the More Idea section of your created board or your created section. Pick a pin to save, then click on the down icon to browse the list of boards in your profile where you can save the pin. These are your main boards. You won't be able to view the board sections here, but you may notice that the boards that have the arrow like this have sections under that board. While this board doesn't have an arrow, it means that it doesn't have a Pinterest board section. You may notice that this top area displays the text Choose Section. This is your main board shown in a bold text, while the list under it are the Pinterest board sections that you have created. If you decide to add another section in this main board, just click on the Create Section button, then add a name and click Add. If you accidentally saved a pin in the wrong section, you can easily change the section and move the pin there. Click the pencil icon. You will see the main board where it is saved. Then choose the section where you want to move the pin. You can also add a note for the pin even if you have saved it on a Pinterest board section. Then click Save. If you want to view it, click the board name and go to the section. This is the description of this pin made by this business account. When you scroll down, you can view the description that we have placed under the pin's note. Pinners who will discover this pin can read the note and view the board name where this pin is saved and also the Pinterest board section. Now let's take a look at some example boards having multiple Pinterest sections. When you're searching for boards to follow, you can easily find boards with sections inside it. If you browse for a board and you only see the number of pins, it doesn't have a Pinterest section inside that board. But if you see the number of sections and the number of pins under that board cover, then you will discover that board has subsections. Businesses can benefit from using the Pinterest board section on their existing or new boards. This feature can provide another way to create subsections of their products or how it fits into their audience's or customer's needs. For instance, a business who are selling furniture may have multiple sections. They can have sections for chairs, tables, shelves, sofas, or beds. So people who are looking to navigate and look for furniture under a subcategory like chairs can easily find the content they are looking for and they don't have to browse through all the pins under the furniture board, especially if that board has thousands of pins under it. Saving pins on your boards over time can lead to boards having over hundreds or thousands of pins. Having a huge collection of pins inside a board can be harder to navigate to find what you are looking for. This is where Pinterest sections are useful. Boards can have multiple sections. It will be easier for pinners to find your content when they're navigating your boards. Now that you know about creating a board within a board, we can now proceed to the next topic, optimizing your Pinterest boards. I'll see you there. Hello guys, in this lesson, we're going to talk about optimizing your Pinterest boards. Let's get started. Your content on Pinterest can increase the chances of getting discovered by pinners if you choose the right keywords that you will include not only in your pins but also in your boards. Take note that your Pinterest boards must be set up for pinners to discover and follow your boards and it should be their resource to find more pins that they would be interested in. The board name. If you're going to create new content and link a new Pinterest pin to that, you must take time to think carefully about the board name that you will use for that content. Think of the keywords that your target audiences are going to search on Pinterest so that your pin will be shown in the first few search results. Use those keywords relevant to your content. Your board name has a limit of 50 characters, but take note that only 29 characters will be visible on the search results unless people click on your board, while the Pinterest board section has a limit of 180 characters. The description. Your board description can tell people what they can find on your board. This is helpful if you have tons of pins inside your board. Using descriptive words will help your potential followers Decide whether they would follow your board or not. By reading your description, 
they can easily know if your content is relevant to them. For businesses, you must avoid leaving your Pinterest board empty. Take note that the pins that you must include inside your boards must also be relevant to your board's name and description. Think of the reasons why any Pinterest user would want to follow your board and what makes it different from the other boards that have the same niche. Cover image. It is recommended to create a cover image for your boards. If you don't upload one, your Pinterest board will look unorganized. It is a great practice to create a cover image that will brand your boards. And you must be consistent with the image style that you'll choose for your boards. You can use a different color that will stand out from your brand's color. Doing this will allow you to make pinners focus on your board's cover image and text. Or you can also use similar colors that you have used on your pins. This will let your boards look uniform with your pins, and it will also look good in your profile. So make sure the title of your board is readable on the cover image too. You need to make sure that the focus is on your board's cover image and the text to help viewers determine what your board is all about. Arranging your boards. You might have old boards that might include older pins that you have created. Those pins are still relevant. You have to know what boards you are prioritizing to show people. The most important and relevant content inside the boards must be placed on the top of your boards list, because that's the first thing that people will see when they check out your profile. You need to keep on creating new pins and save it on your boards. Pinterest prioritizes new content to show it to more people on the platform. Optimizing your Pinterest board relevant to your niche will allow your content to reach your target audiences more. Pinterest search engine will be able to show your content to those people as it also checks your board's description if it matches the keywords that people search on Pinterest. Now that you know about optimizing your Pinterest boards, we can now proceed to the next topic, how to make the most out of group boards. I'll see you there. Hello guys, in this lesson, we're going to talk about how to make the most out of group boards. Let's get started. Group boards are similar to regular boards where different members of the group can contribute to save relevant pins inside the group board. There are boards that only allow Pinterest users to follow and share their group board. There are also boards that will allow people to join and contribute to their group board. You can identify a group board from a regular board when you see a small icon with photos of people inside, as you can see in this section. On the top section is the group board name, and when you click on these icons of profiles, you will see the group members here. You can browse the members in this group and check out their profiles. You can see the number of members in this section, and you can also see the number of followers of this group board. This shows the owner of this group board, like a normal board. You can see the description of a board in this section. You must also apply the same optimization tips that you have learned from optimizing a regular Pinterest board. You can see that this group board has multiple Pinterest sections here. You'll be able to see the number of pins saved inside the Pinterest sections, the number of followers, and the group contributors. Group boards can increase your followers. If there are a lot of contributors and followers and you get accepted to be part of it, then start contributing pins, there will be a lot of people who will discover your pins. They can follow you and save their pins on their boards. Also, these people can be redirected to your website, giving you more traffic to your blog, article, or e-commerce website. Group boards also boost engagement. Group boards have similar-minded people of the same niche. And that is if their intention is not to share pins with spam links. Being part of a quality board group will have people who appreciate the content that everyone creates and shares, and this generates more comments on their pins and engagement. Now let me show you how to create a group board. Go to the plus icon and select Create Board. Input the name of your board, then click on the Create button. Next, pick a pin to save. Next, edit your board to add a description and the rules of your board. Then add a topic of your group and start adding contributors here. You can search and join groups. 
Some group boards have the join button feature available where they can receive requests from people who want to be a part of the group board. You can see here that there are only one group member and a creator. Remember to join groups that are relevant to your niche and make sure to follow the rules of the boards so you can stay inside the group and get your brand to be known. Choose the groups that have a lesser number of contributors. These groups will contain more quality pins with legit pin links. Once you're part of a group, share your pins that you have created. Build a strong relationship with the creator of the board. You can follow the creator, comment, and engage on their pins. The pins that you share must be relevant to the group and it should conform to the rules of the board. You might have trouble finding and discovering group boards on Pinterest. If you search for keywords relevant to a group board that you want to discover on Pinterest, you might be limited to finding a few group boards. But there's a website where you can find group boards on Pinterest. Just go to pingroupy.com and you can use its search engine to find any niche related Pinterest group boards. As you type in a keyword, you will see tons of group boards that are on Pinterest related to that keyword. Just click a group board name, then a pop-up window will appear, click on the button, and you'll be redirected to the group board on Pinterest. Using pingroupy.com will make it easier to find niche-related group boards on Pinterest. Remember that Pinterest is also looking at the boards that you are a part of. You have to make sure that the group boards that you'll join will have a few contributors so that the pins shared and pinned in the group are controlled and prevent spammers from sabotaging the quality of the group board. Now that you know how to make the most out of group boards, we can now proceed to the next chapter, Pinterest Marketing Basics. I'll see you there. Hello guys, welcome to the chapter, Pinterest Marketing Basics. In this lesson, we're going to talk about what are product pins. Let's get started. Pinterest users are browsing through Pinterest pins that they can purchase related to their keyword search. If the search option is set to all pins, they can discover a mixture of pins. They will see blogs, product pins, or video pins. The first few pins are ranked high compared to the other pins shown below. If they choose the option product pins, then the pinners will be able to choose from the recommended pins shown in the search results that are product related. If they are looking to purchase a certain appliance at home, but they are not yet decided, what the best brands and models are, they are more likely to click on pins where they can learn what the best products are and choose a blog that Pinterest recommended. Once the article recommends top brands, the user can look for that exact product on Pinterest. Product pins are a type of rich pin that uses the metadata of the product from the e-commerce site. The metadata of the product from the website includes all the data relevant to that product like the stock availability of the product, the up-to-date price, and the product description. When you search for product pins, you will see a price on the upper section of the pin. You can see that on the search results. You will see here that the pin's website will redirect you as a click on the link. And when you click on the pin from the search results, you can view the details of the product. Here's the product price, description, and the link where you can purchase the product. If you've done extensive research about how good this product is, then this page is where you can add it to your cart and proceed to checkout. Having pins for the products that you are selling online can help your business increase brand awareness. When people are looking for products on Pinterest and the keywords they entered match your product pins details, they are more likely to discover your product pins. They can even check out your Pinterest profile and navigate through your pins and boards. Doing so will make them discover more of your pins and content, especially your products. As you can see here, that you can explore more product pins from this pin using the Shop the Look feature. It shows you the pins that they are selling, and all of these product pins are found on this main pin. If you click on one of these pins, you can view the price, the product details, and the link to their e-commerce website. If you scroll down, you'll be able to see more of their products in this section. Under more from homedepot.com, you will see more Home Depot product pins related to the pin that you have clicked, while the section 
are the related pins from the other business profiles, similar to the pin that you have chosen. It also increases and drives traffic to your e-commerce store. The pinners who are looking for products to buy will be able to discover more pins related to your product that they want to purchase. If Pinterest detects that those keywords are products related, it will give priority and show product pins to the people who are searching for it. They can view it under the Shop tab on their feed or filter product pins from the search engine. These people are more likely to click on a product pin and go to the website where they can purchase that product. Product pins have the potential to increase your sales. Using the right keywords that your potential audiences will be searching for, you'll be able to lead them to your product pins. Once they are redirected to your e-commerce website, there's a greater chance that they will purchase that product right away. Product pins will give you more advantages since the products that you are selling on your e-commerce website will be visible and shown on the Pinterest feed and under product pins, especially when pinners are looking for your product and they have chosen to see product pins in their feed to filter out non-product pins. Now that you know what are product pins, we can now proceed to the next topic. What types of posts work best on Pinterest? I'll see you there. Hello guys. In this lesson, we're going to talk about what type of posts work best on Pinterest. Let's get started. Social media platforms have different types of posts that work best on their platforms. The type of posts that work on one social media platform may not or cannot be expected to work on another social media platform. On Pinterest, we all know that pins are what people discover and search for on the platform and each pin can be linked to a website like a blog or an e-commerce website. Now let's talk about the different types of posts that most people are searching for on Pinterest. Health and Wellness these types of posts target people who are looking to lose weight or researching for different workout routines that they can apply at home or at the gym. Some of the pins under this type can be seen as long vertical GIFs or videos that demonstrate the workouts that a person can do at home or at the gym. You might also find blogs helpful for this if you want more information. Food or Recipes most pinners are stay-at-home women and they're mostly moms who are looking for new recipes to try for their family. Recipe pins can be linked to blogs that showcase a particular recipe with instructions and also the ingredients. The good thing about recipes that most people find on Pinterest is that pinners will be able to see the ingredients as they click on the pin without being redirected to a website. Travel Pinners use the platform to find compelling visuals of places that they think can be their next travel getaway. They want to see stunning visuals that will excite them to choose that place where they can spend their vacation with their family. So posting pins that promote places using good visuals like videos or photos where people can go and visit as their family vacation will work on Pinterest inspirational or motivational quotes. People are finding ways to motivate them or give them quotes to live by to get them through a busy and demanding day. Motivational quotes are commonly searched by pinners and they also save it on their boards. Home-related pins. Most pins share DIY hacks of how to build something at home as a project. Businesses who are selling home building materials or products can easily promote these types of pins to their target audiences. Share some DIY hacks showing ideas that people can make or purchase and apply it to their home. Seasonal Trends During holidays, people use Pinterest to look for ideas and plan what to wear, where they can travel, what recipes they can try for that special day, or what products they can buy that are relevant to that holiday season. Businesses can take advantage of these seasonal trends by creating pins collected inside a board dedicated to that seasonal trend. You can create pins that will redirect people to your blog about what recipes to try, outfit ideas on that holiday, great places to go, or offer product discounts since it's a holiday season. 
Doing this will give you more reach. You can start preparing seasonal content 45 days before the holiday, and as the day comes closer, your pins activity will increase. It's best to post relevant content on Pinterest. You can experiment and focus on what type of content is best enjoyed by your target audiences and what their needs are. Keep on posting consistently to get a wider audience reach rather than uploading all content at once. Now that you know what type of posts work best on Pinterest, we can now proceed to the next topic, making the most out of Pinterest tabs. I'll see you there. Hello guys. In this lesson, we're going to talk about making the most out of Pinterest tabs. Let's get started. Pinners are always searching for pins to discover, repurpose, and save pins on their boards. They are actively looking for ideas from pins that they can try or look for pins that they can purchase. The ideas that these pinners are looking for can be found on your business, especially if their interest is related to your business niche. Pinners can check your business profile when they discover your pins, and once they see your profile having pins that they are interested in, they are more likely to follow you. Your business profile has tabs that are useful for you and your visitors. On your web app, there are a few tabs that are commonly found on a profile. You will see the Highlights tab, Boards, and Pins. But if you have product pins, you will have a Shop tab on your profile. People can view the price of the product and also if it's in stock. When they click on the Shop tab, they can discover your product pins and they can be redirected to your e-commerce website to purchase the product. The Tried tab will show pins that people have tried. They can upload photos and add their feedback on those pins. You'll be able to see reviews, comments, or feedbacks including the photo of that pin that they have tried. There will be negative and positive feedbacks here and people who will view these reviews can also engage and leave a comment. If pinners try to pin, they can share the photo they have captured from their mobile phones and add feedback for that pin. The latest feedbacks will be shown on top. People can find other pinners who have tried the same pin and leave their comments and reply to every feedback, increasing the engagement on the pin. So once I have tried a pin, the Tried tab will be visible on my profile. I can easily go back to the pin that I have tried. The Overview tab on the mobile app will show the featured boards in a slideshow view, which can easily catch a pinner's attention. It can also show the latest pins from this business account, and you'll be able to view how recent the pins were saved. As you can see in this example, it shows last saved 10 hours ago. Below you can see the latest boards, also applying the recent hour a pin was saved inside the board and this was the latest pin from this section. Next, you'll see the Boards tab created and saved by this Pinterest account. You can see the number of pins inside a board and the recent hours ago a pin was saved. The next tab is the Pins tab. You'll see all the pins created and saved here and the recent pin will be shown on top. Next, the video pins are separated from the photo pins when you view this on a mobile device. So all the video pins are collected inside the Videos tab. This is useful if you want to view all the video pins in one tab. On the top section, it will show you the total number of video pins and the total views. Next is the Activity tab. Under this tab, you'll be able to see which of the pins that you have created are repinned by pinners. When you click on the pin, you'll be able to discover the pinner who saved your created pin and view their profile. This information can help you as a brand to determine what type of pins and what among your created pins are more likely to be saved by people. You can also discover the pinners who are saving more of your pins. So you can take note of the pins that attract more viewers and discover the pinners who are actively saving your pins. Now that you know about making the most out of Pinterest tabs, we can now proceed to the next topic, proper usage of hashtags on Pinterest. I'll see you there. Hello guys. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the proper usage of hashtags on Pinterest. Let's get started. Hashtags on Pinterest have been functional since 2017. It greatly benefits marketers who need more exposure on their pins. 
but there was a time when Pinterest does not recommend its users to apply hashtags on their pins. Today, you can apply hashtags on your pins, but there are still some marketers who are not able to apply the proper usage of hashtags on Pinterest. Pinterest recommends you to use only a few hashtags. You should add hashtags that are no more than 20 hashtags per pin. This is to lessen the spam activity on the platform. Use hashtags describing your pin. It is recommended that the hashtags that you will apply on your pins must be descriptive and specific, and it should describe the content in your pins. It doesn't need to have a long set of phrases like hashtag I look stunning in hats, but enough to make your content prioritized by Pinterest's algorithm like hashtag outfit for moms. Hashtags on Pinterest can help you improve the visibility of your pins on Pinterest search results. When a pinner searches for a hashtag, Pinterest will show results of fresh pins that use that hashtag. As a result, it will show at the top of their feed, giving you more pin exposure. Using hashtags is a way for pinners to discover your content. You have to take advantage of using hashtags on Pinterest since not all users include them on their pins. When a pinner who can be your target audience and a ready buyer searches for a hashtag that match the hashtags on your pin, your pin will be shown on top of the feed. So where should you add hashtags? The best place to add hashtags is on the pin's description. To add tags on your pin's description, type in the hash key before any keyword or phrase. And remember not to add spaces in between words. It is recommended to add hashtags at the end of your pinch's description so that it will look cleaner. This also applies to the pins that are saved by a pinner. As you can see, the hashtag was used here in the description below. You may notice that the hashtags on the description below are shown in blue text and they're clickable. Next, add hashtags on the pin's title. Some pins include hashtags at the end of the pin's title. As you can see in the search results, the hashtag casual outfit that was placed at the end of the pin's title showed the pin on the top search results. Now that you have discovered that you can use hashtags on your pins, you probably are wondering if you should add hashtags on your older pins. You can add hashtags on your older pins, but it will not help your older pins show up on the first search results on the pinner's search feed. Pinterest will only apply showing pins with the hashtags to newer pins as it will be shown on top of the search feed. Remember to use fewer hashtags. Having too many hashtags will make your pin look unprofessional and it might seem spammy. Less than 5 hashtags are safe to use. Avoid using the same technique of using hashtags on other platforms like Twitter or Instagram. Now that you know about the proper usage of hashtags on Pinterest, we can now proceed to the next topic, proper keyword research. I'll see you there. Hello guys, in this lesson, we're going to talk about proper keyword research. Let's get started. Pinterest is a visual content search engine, and active users on the platform are looking for content using very specific keywords. They are finding ways to improve and learn something to apply it to their daily routine. Discovering new ideas for any niche is very common on Pinterest. Like Google, a very popular search engine, you must optimize the keywords used in your Pinterest account, like your name, bio, boards, and pins, to make your content and brand searchable, and more people can discover your pins on Pinterest. You may notice some profiles include the keywords that most of their target audiences are searching for, and they place it in their profile name, bio, pins, and boards. To determine the right keywords that you must use on your account, pins, and boards, you must do proper keyword research on Pinterest. There are a few ways you can find keywords specific to your niche that your audiences are commonly using. First is the Pinterest search engine. You can type in a keyword, and Pinterest will show you auto-suggested keywords after the keyword that you have typed, and you can see it in the drop-down in bold keywords, like what you can see in this example. You can search for one keyword and add an ABC search. You will see that if you start with the second keyword with a letter A or B or C, 
You can see the keywords recommended that start with that letter. It will be easier for you to look for more additional keywords if you try the ABC method. You'll be able to generate tons of keywords using that method. Next is the Pinterest guided search tool. When you type in keywords on the search engine, you will see more keywords below the search engine text box. These are keywords that you can add as a guide for your recent keywords on the text box. These are the keywords that most people on Pinterest search for along with the keywords that you've typed in the search text box. When you click on a guided keyword, it will be added to your recent keywords on the text box and you will be able to see more associated and related keywords in this section. Every time you choose a guided keyword, a new list of keywords will appear in the guided search tool. You can copy these on your notepad. Simply highlight the first keyword on the left side and drag it to the end to highlight the entire list. Then you can copy it now and paste it on your notepad. Last is using the promoted pins. Under the Create Ads, you can find Pinterest keyword research tool that you can use to find the keyword phrases related to your niche. You can scroll down from these guided keywords. You can look for 4 to 5 keyword phrases and choose the monthly searches with a lesser reach like 100,000 to 500,000 and avoid keyword phrases that show a million reach since there are a lot of marketers who could be using that keyword so stay away from that keyword. Copy the keyword phrases that you have clicked on then paste that on your notepad. If you want your content to rank high on Pinterest search results you need to know where in your pins does Pinterest look for a match on the keywords that people type on the search bar. Pinterest algorithm searches for keywords inside the data of various parts in your pins. It looks for the keywords in the title, description, tags, author, or profile name where the pin came from. So it is important to include keywords when uploading your content or repinning other people's pins. If you place the proper keywords in the right places, your pins can be found on the home feed of people interested in the same niche related to your keywords. These people are not even following you on Pinterest and yet they see your pins on their home feed. It is important to do a proper keyword research first so that you can properly target the right audiences who might be interested in your blog or products that you are promoting. Using the keywords related to your niche will help your content be discovered by your target audiences. Now that you know about proper keyword research, we can now proceed to the next topic, understanding analytics. I'll see you there. Hello guys, in this lesson, we're going to talk about understanding analytics. Let's get started. The key to successful marketing and promotions on Pinterest is through the analytics. Pinterest analytics can help you determine which among your pins get more clicks, engagement, and views. Using the data, you can determine which content work best on your target audiences and followers. Take note that only business accounts have Pinterest Analytics. Pinterest Analytics shows you your profile overview. Under the overview, you will be able to see impressions, engagements, close-ups, link clicks, and saves. Impressions shows you the number of times your pins were seen. People view your pins from their home feed and search results feed. You can study your impressions if it increased over time. If the impressions on your pins increased, then you are doing something right on your pins. It also means that you have optimized your pins and are attracting more pinners in viewing and saving your pins. Engagements show you the number of activities detected on your pins such as the saves, close-ups, link clicks, or carousel swipes. In this example, you can see this pin has more comments and people who tried this pin even uploaded photos showing you how they made this recipe. Pinterest close-ups is a type of engagement. When someone clicks on your pin as they see your pin on their feed but they don't click the pin to redirect them to your website, this accounts for the number of close-ups on this pin. Pinterest saves is the number of saves on your pin. When a pinner saves your pin on their board, that will be added to your Pinterest saves metric. When you have seen that your saves metric has increased over time, it means that your pin has been attracting pinners to repin them on their boards. Your pin is relevant to these people and your pins are attractive and they're good quality image or videos. 
You can experiment on your designs and create more attractive images to see what works best for your audiences. Pinterest link clicks. This is accounted for when people search for a pin that they would like to discover and they clicked on it from their feed. And as they click on your pin and get redirected to your website, that accounts for a link click. This is what drives traffic to your website. Analytics Top Pins This metric shows you what among your pins have generated more impressions and ranked first from all of your pins metrics. As you discover your top ranked pin, you can pattern the next pins that you create from that pin. Audience Insights This metric tells you what demographics are viewing your content. This will let you know if you are attracting the right audiences to your pins. If you scroll down, you'll be able to see more data like categories and interest, demographics like age, gender, location, and device used by pinners to view your pins. Pinterest Analytics is a great tool to help marketers determine their progress and the effectiveness of the pins that they create. It is important to use your analytics as a guide for learning and understanding what your audience like about your pins. Now that you know about understanding analytics, we can now proceed to the next chapter, e-commerce on Pinterest. I'll see you there. Hello guys, welcome to the chapter, e-commerce on Pinterest. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to sell on Pinterest. Let's get started. Business owners can use Pinterest to drive more traffic to their website generating more potential leads. Most of your leads are using Pinterest to discover products that they can purchase. Selling on Pinterest is a great way to market your products using pins. Let's discuss what are the requirements that you must have before you can start selling on Pinterest the proper way. You must have a business website. Your own website is where you would want your Pinterest users to be redirected to as they click on your pins. That way, they can discover your website content, the products or services that you offer, and know more about your brand. This is helpful for businesses with an online store, as you know that most Pinterest users are already using the platform to shop online, they can be your potential customers. You must have a Pinterest business profile already set up and optimized. In the previous lessons, you have already learned how to set up your own business account on Pinterest and ways to optimize your profile. That way, people who discover your pins and browse your profile will see that you have a legit business account. Know your audience. You have to know who you want to show your content to. You can take a look at the audience insights under the analytics menu to see the audiences who have seen or engaged with any of your pins in the last 30 days. In this example, you can see that most pinners are from the categories home decor, DIY and crafts, entertainment, education, women's fashion, food and drinks, and art, while these categories are lesser since these categories of pins are less likely to be seen on my profile. Below, you can see the age group of your audience in which 25 to 34 years old are the highest and 18 to 24 years old is the second highest. And for gender distribution, most are female pinners. For location, you can see the top metros and the top countries. You can see that most of my audiences are from the United States and Los Angeles. Lastly, you can view the device they use, and mostly they access Pinterest using an iPhone, and second is using the web. Next, create niche boards. Under the categories and interests of the audience insights, you can see the top interests of your audiences. Using this data, if your niche is selling products from home decor, then you can use this home decor interests to create boards for each interest in this list. For the interest room decor, you can see that there are 71% of audiences. You can create blogs that can tell people the benefits of your products and how they can use it, and add those pins inside your niche board. Not only are you selling products on your e-commerce website, but you're also giving value by letting people learn the benefits of such products. Next, create pins for your products. If you have an e-commerce website, you can link your products to your e-commerce store. It's good to have individual pins that will redirect people to the product page where they can purchase that single product. Most pinners are attracted to stunning product photos. 
so add photos that can showcase the products that you are selling on your e-commerce website. Next, apply for rich pins. Rich pin will allow your pins to show your products with price, description, and a link to a website where people can purchase your products. Product pins can be helpful for your business too. Pinterest gives priority to show product pins to pinners who are searching for keywords that match a product pin's details. Next, use collection pins. Shop the look pins are a great way to link multiple products in one single pin. You can inspire users to buy other products that they can find inside a pin. You can create a pin and tag multiple product pins on that pin. This can show people white dots or categories with a white background on the pin. This will showcase multiple products that people can view and have a different perspective on how they can use and apply those products. For example, products that can be used in a room can be shown in one pin. This is the main pin which shows people how the other products can look good and be useful in this room. This point of view will excite people who are looking to purchase products that they can apply to their homes. Another great example is a pin for fashion. Outfits can be showcased by models who wear the products that you promote. A photo can show multiple dots for categories like pants, shoes, and shirts. Here's an example. If you search for casual outfits, you may notice pins that have this icon, View Products. It will show you multiple categories of products that you can shop for, like shoes, pants, or shirts. If you click on each category, you can view more product pins for shoes, and all of these shoes shown in the shop shoes search results are similar to the shoes shown in the main photo. The same goes for pants. It will show product pins similar to the pants shown in the main pin. When we click the shirts and tops, it will show similar product pins with the same color but different styles. Next, be a verified merchant. This badge will help people see your business as a trustworthy brand. To be eligible, you must meet Pinterest's community guidelines, which shows you what activities and content that you must avoid keeping Pinterest spam-free resource of content. If you think you're eligible, then you can go to the Verified Merchant Program page to apply and join the program. Now that you know how to sell on Pinterest, we can now proceed to the next topic, using buyable pins. I'll see you there. Hello guys, in this lesson, we're going to talk about using buyable pins. Let's get started. Pinterest has been a platform to shop for products that pinners can buy online. Most of the pins on the platform redirect pinners to a website where they can discover more products from the brand and purchase products on their e-commerce website. Pinterest buyable pins are similar to regular pins that can be saved by pinners, but there's an additional feature that can only be found on buyable pins. Buyable pins allow pinners to purchase a product without leaving the Pinterest app. Here's how it looks on Pinterest. The pins will show your potential buyers product prices in blue color. Pinners will have the option to see the size or the color options of the product and filter products by price. The price filters can allow pinners to sort through buyable pins depending on the price range that they choose that will match their budget. They can see the pin with a blue buy it button or a blue add to cart button for buyable pins. This feature makes it more convenient for people to shop on Pinterest. It's also safe to purchase since purchases are paid via credit card through Apple Pay. To apply for buyable pins, you must have a business account on Pinterest. Then set the buyable pins to feature up on your e-commerce platform. The e-commerce platforms that are integrated with Pinterest buyable pins are Shopify and BigCommerce. On Shopify, you can sell your products on Pinterest by adding the Pinterest sales channel. It will link to your website once your request is approved. Then the products pinned from your e-commerce sites will be seen as a buyable pin having the blue buy it button on Pinterest. All sales will be automatically synced with your e-commerce site and you can monitor it too. When you make sales with your buyable pins, Pinterest won't take any commission from any products you sold using buyable pins. You can create a board for all of your buyable pins. You can set this board to protected products board so that only you can see it 
while you are getting started with buyable pins and save more pins on that board. According to Pinterest, it will take up to five days for your pins to show as buyable pins. Availability on pinners. Buyable pins can be seen on the feed and searches, but they are not accessible by anyone on Pinterest. It is only available to a limited number of retail partners and merchants in the United States and is accessible on devices such as Android, iPhone, or iPad. Pinners won't be able to view buyable pins on the web app. Buyable pins are a great Pinterest feature to include when you're selling products on your e-commerce websites like Shopify or Big Commerce. It makes it easier to purchase products on Pinterest right from the Pinterest app, since people won't be redirected outside Pinterest just to purchase the product. Now that you know about using buyable pins, we can now proceed to the next topic, how to promote a drop shipping store on Pinterest. I'll see you there. Hello guys, in this lesson, we're going to talk about how to promote a drop shipping store from Pinterest. Let's get started. If you want to drive traffic to your website, you need to use your social media accounts to show your target audiences that you are a brand that they can trust. Build your online presence so that people can see that your business is legit. On Pinterest, you must optimize your business profile, claim your website, apply for a verified merchant program, apply for rich pins, and create more content to show your profile visitors that your brand can be trusted and they can learn something from you. So that when they see one of your pins promoting your drop shipping store and find products that they want to purchase, they are guaranteed to receive the products. Your social media presence will help you promote your drop shipping store for you. Pinterest demographics is a great area to tap into. Millions of Pinterest users are looking for items to shop on Pinterest. It's a platform where you can increase website traffic. If your business website is not on Pinterest yet, then you're missing out on a great opportunity that may increase your business sales. To start promoting a drop shipping store from Pinterest, you need to let your drop shipping store be known to your target audiences. People won't discover your brand if you don't promote your products through your Pinterest boards and pins. First, create relevant Pinterest boards for your drop shipping store. A great way to promote your drop shipping store is by using Pinterest boards. Your target audiences can discover your boards when they search for a keyword that matches your boards. Use your boards to promote a lifestyle and not just the brand. Doing this will allow people to see your pins at a personal level. You can create multiple boards to reflect your drop shipping store's products. Also, you don't have to create a new pin for all of your products. You can choose to curate pins from other Pinterest owners. This will give you more audience reach. Then create pins that will redirect people to the products on your drop shipping store. Make sure that you have images on your drop shipping store that you can use and share on your Pinterest business account. People won't be able to save pictures from your store if you don't create one and make sure to have high quality photos that can grab people's attention. If you have a drop shipping store up and running with all the products you can sell online, go to your drop shipping store and choose a product that you can pin. You may notice that you can share this item on Pinterest and save it on your boards. You can save those products from the products you tag board, which is a protected board. Protected boards are not shown on your profile page, but anyone who has the link to those products inside that board can view them. People buy things from the branding or lifestyle of the products it represents. Your drop shipping store can benefit from the traffic that will come from Pinterest and start making sales. You can get a lot of traffic on Pinterest to your drop shipping store once you've started creating pins for the products from your store. Or you can save images as pins from your website and save it on the boards on your Pinterest profile. Now that you know how to promote a drop shipping store from Pinterest, we can now proceed to the next chapter, Growing Your Pinterest. I'll see you there. Hello guys, welcome to the chapter, Growing Your Pinterest. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to find the right followers and boards. Let's get started. Pinterest is a great platform to find your target audiences who can also be your followers interested in your niche-related content or products. 
One way for your brand to be known on Pinterest is to target the right audience who are already interested in the niche you are in. First, you have to know your audience. Before you can find the right followers, you must know who you are going to target. Imagine who you are trying to reach related to your content. If your niche is home decor, then you can search for that keyword on the search engine. The search results will give you pins saved by the Pinterest users. You can check below the user who saved the pin. Check out their profile and see if their boards and pins are relevant to your business niche. If so, you can comment on their pin and follow them. In return, they might follow you back. Next, follow other people in your niche. Use the search engine to type in relevant keywords related to your niche. Then set the filter to people so that you will see Pinterest users recommended by Pinterest that you can follow. You can see that each user shows you the number of boards they have and the number of followers they have in their profile. You can check out each profile that is shown here. Check out the pins and boards on their profile and see if they do have content that is relevant to your brand. If their content is relevant to your brand, start following them. Repin related pins from other users. You don't have to create all pins in your profile. It's also a good practice to save pins from other people who originally created that pin. Make sure to stick to pins that are related to your niche. Doing this will make your potential followers be intrigued by the other pins that you have in your profile. The owner of the pin will be notified that you have saved their pins. They can follow you and you can follow them too. You can be sure that these people are the pinners who are actively engaging on the platform. Next. You can also look for group boards relevant to your business niche. Pinterest boards provide you with a pool of followers who are already interested in the niche-related content on that board. Remember to choose the boards with only a few contributors to get more quality pins linked to a valid website content. Look for groups where you can join and contribute so that you can showcase your pins and the followers of that group will be aware of your brand. You'll get more exposure and people might repin your pins and follow you. Check your activity tab. Your activity tab will show you the pinners who have saved your pins. These pinners are interested in your content, that's why they saved it on their boards. Check out their profile, engage on their pins, and follow them. They will get notified once you follow them, and they might follow you back. Getting a huge number of followers will not benefit your business if these people are not interested in your niche and do not engage in your pins. Set a goal to attract the right followers who are interested in your niche-related products and are engaging with your business. The right followers for your brand will be aware of your online presence when you have established your brand's authenticity. This will make your target audience trust you. But remember, most of the time, that the number of viewers for your pins can be greater than the number of your followers as more and more people discover your pins. Now that you know how to find the right followers and boards, we can now proceed to the next topic, how to create high converting images for Pinterest. I'll see you there. Hello guys, in this lesson, we're going to talk about how to create high converting images for Pinterest. Let's get started. Images are the most essential part of Pinterest. It is the most important part of the platform where anyone who uses an attractive and interesting pin can drive more traffic to their website and increase conversion. Your images, referred to as pins, are what makes or breaks your brand's exposure on the platform. If you create high-quality images and upload them on your profile and combine it with the right keywords, that your potential audiences are searching for, then your image are more likely to convert into website traffic, followers, or even sales for ready buyers on Pinterest. To create high converting images, you can follow these tips that you can apply on your pins. Use the right keywords for your file name. When you upload your pins on Pinterest, you must name that pin with a keyword or keyword phrases that you think people will use to land on that pin. Don't upload pins with the names like image123456.jpg. The name of your images is relevant for your pins to be discovered on Pinterest. Once people discover your pins, you can expect your pins to be saved by other pinners. Use your brand's color. When you're creating your own pins, 
Make sure to use the same combination of colors that you have used for your previous pins. Maintain that color on your pins because that will be your branding. When people see your pin on their feed, they can easily identify that they have seen that pin before and they will know that it is your brand's pin. Next, make your text easy to read. Your text must stand out on your pin. It should be a font that is clearly readable and big enough to make it easier to understand what your pin's content is all about. Most of the time, pinners just glance at a pin and they will only click on the pin that can attract them. And if the text overlay will help them understand what the pin is all about. Next, use the right tools to create your images. You can use free tools where you can edit the pins that you can use and upload on your Pinterest account. Some popular apps already have a predefined image size that you can use on Pinterest. Use it to make it easier for you to create a pin for your content. You can also find free stock images that you can use in one of these free tools. Or you can go to pexels.com and search for photos that you need. Some tools that you can use to create your Pinterest pins are Snappa, Canva, or designer.com. You can check their website and sign up for free. Try out their app and create your pins. Make sure to apply your color branding, the text overlay having the font size and font style that you'll be using for all of your pins. Your pins have more chances of getting discovered, saved, and repinned, resulting in high conversions. Remember that when uploading images on your profile, you need to rename the file name to the keywords that your target audiences will be using to discover your pin. Use your brand's color, font size, and font style, making it uniform, and it will allow your followers to recognize your pins and associate it to your brand. Use free tools to make it easier to create high converting images for you. Now that you know how to create high converting images, we can now proceed to the next topic, choosing the right keywords for the right season. I'll see you there. Hello guys. In this lesson, we're going to talk about choosing the right keywords for the right season. Let's get started. Pinterest algorithm will show your pins to the pinners who search for the keywords that you add on your pins, especially at a trending season. By knowing when people are searching for specific keywords, you'll be able to learn when you can create or share content and use those keywords for your pins on that season. You already know how to properly do a keyword research on Pinterest. When you have the list of keywords that you can choose from and apply them to your pins, you can use Pinterest trends on the platform to give you an idea of the popularity of your search terms that you can use over time. To check what keywords are mostly searched for on a particular season, we can use the Pinterest trends tool. You can find Pinterest trends under the analytics menu. Pinterest Trends has the similarity with Google Trends to help you decide the best keywords that you can use for you to target your audiences. Pinterest Trends is a tool to help brands and marketers to discover the top search terms on Pinterest in the United States, United Kingdom, and Canada. When you search for a term on the text box, you can see a drop-down list of seven suggested searches related to your current keyword or keyword phrase. You may notice a graphic trend at the end of each keyword. When you choose a term, you can see a graphic illustration showing you searches of that keyword phrase over time. The results are indexed from 0 to 100, showing you the search volume of the term compared to all the other keyword searches of that week. It shows the index from 0 to 100 as a scale. 0 means less popular and 100 being the most popular. It shows you how a term gets a higher or a lower volume or search during that week. The results are not the actual number of searches. Take note that you can compare the trend of that term for over the last year. In this example term, you can see that the highest peak was last January, then the next one was on February, and the latest peak was around May. After May, there were lesser searches for the term travel. This means that if you use travel pins during this time, there will be a fewer pinners who would be searching for that content on Pinterest. If you check out the trending ideas across the most popular categories, like fashion, and in this example, we can check the keyword phrase, fall outfits. You can see the last highest peak of people 
Searching for this term was during October of 2019, and the next peak of searches using this term is during September. This data will let us know that during this month of September, it is good to use the terms fall outfits on your pins, then repin content with this keyword phrase and save it on a new board in our profile. This tool will help you determine when it is best to share your content. When we check out the terms in the food category, we can see the popular terms during this week. Now let's choose Apple Crisp. You can see a different graph for this keyword. When you take a look at the graph, the highest point tells you the date when a greater number of people search for this term. The highest was during October of 2019, then December, and the latest highest peak is during the month of September. This means that during the month of October and December of 2019 and September of 2020, there's a large volume of pinners who are searching for the recipe, Apple Crisp. This data can help you determine whether the chosen keywords for your pin will get more clicks at a trending season. During this time, you can repin other people's content having this keyword phrase, and that will result in getting more audience reach, even if it's not your own content. If you have a pin that is related to the keyword that you typed in, you'll be able to know if more people are searching for that keyword for a particular time. Next, you can plan your seasonal content. When a holiday comes near, you must be prepared to create pins and curate pins for the holiday trend season, like Christmas. This will attract more people to your pins. You can prepare 45 days before Christmas and keep on creating pins for your content related to the upcoming holiday, which is Christmas. Doing this will allow your content to have more exposure, more saves, clicks, and website traffic. Related terms. This allows you to add related keyword search terms from the first keyword phrase that you have placed in this section. This allows you to compare terms that will show you results in a graphic illustration. This shows you how much search volume each of the terms compared to the other terms. Take note that you can only compare four terms at a time. Using this data, you can see that the term fall decor shown in orange got more searches compared to these three terms in the graph. And the second most searched term is the fall decor ideas for the home. This data can be helpful for pinners who have a home improvement or home decor niche. Below you can see the popular pins related to these four terms that you are comparing. You can click on any of these pins to see the search results of pins for that keyword phrase. You can easily save other people's pins from these search results. You can pick a pin and save it in one of your home improvement related boards. You can use the tool to find out when you should be pinning a particular content using specific keywords. With Pinterest trends, you can discover emerging trends. You can see what people are looking for and the time of the month that they are looking for it. Now that you know about choosing the right keywords for the right season, we can now proceed to the next topic, getting traffic to your website with Pinterest. I'll see you there. Hello guys, in this lesson, we're going to talk about getting traffic to your website using Pinterest. Let's get started. Pinterest has been the platform that can help increase traffic to your website. The pins that you will create and upload on your Pinterest profile can be discovered by more people and they will be redirected to your website increasing your website traffic. But it will take some time before you have a collection of pins and boards, since it is not advisable to upload tons of pins in just one day. To get more website traffic, you need to make your pins discoverable on the platform. First, use the right keywords. Use the Pinterest search engine and the guided tool to add to your list of ideas for the keywords that you will use in your pins or boards title and description. This will tell Pinterest that your pins and boards are relevant to those pinners who are searching for these keywords that you have included in your pins and boards, increasing your visibility on the search results and the chances of pinners landing on your website. Next, pin consistently. Pinterest gives priority to show pins to more pinners, especially when it's a fresh content. Pinterest wants its users to share new pins to every user interested in the niche you are in. 
Once the algorithm notices that you keep on sharing quality pins to your viewers, it will increase your impressions, thus showing your content to more pinners. Take note that you must gradually upload new pins and save other people's pins. For boards, it's recommended to create a maximum of 10 boards per day, while 25 pins are the maximum post of pins per day. Your website content will have a greater chance to get more website traffic once you add fresh content every week. Fresh content can be a pin from your old blog content, new blog post, or a link to a product. You can make multiple pins. Fresh content is considered when you upload a new image as your pin, even if it's using the same website URL. If you have a blog content, you can keep on showing the same content to your target audiences and creating multiple images for that content. You just have to make sure not to upload them every day. And be sure to edit the title and description of those pins and make them unique. Space out the days when you're uploading new pins on your boards. It's safe to have a 48-hour space in between before uploading a new image pin for the same website content. In between those days, you can repin other people's content so that you can keep on updating your boards with new pins even if it's not your own pin. This will allow your boards and pins to show up on your followers' feed or people who have an interest in your pins. Add relevant hashtags. Try converting long-tail keywords into hashtags. So just remove the spaces in between. For example, type in the keyword outfit and you'll see suggested long-tail keywords in the drop-down. You can use outfit ideas summer and turn it into a hashtag. When you check out this first pin, you'll notice that Pinterest gave this pin priority over the other pins since it used the hashtag that we have typed in the search box. If you use these keywords and remove the hash key, you may notice that it showed us different search results. Hashtags can increase your content's visibility on the search results. Thus, more pinners can discover your pin, and as they click on it, they'll be redirected to your website, and you'll get more traffic to your website. You can drive traffic to your website using your pins and boards. Create multiple pins for your blog content and upload them 48 hours in between. During the times that you're not uploading that content, you can share pins from other users relevant to your brand's niche. Keep on researching for relevant keywords that you can use for the multiple pins that you're going to create for one URL link redirecting people to your blog content. Now that you know about getting traffic to your website using Pinterest, we can now proceed to the next topic, engaging with other Pinterest users. I'll see you there. Hello guys. In this lesson, we're going to talk about engaging with other Pinterest users. Let's get started. If you want more engagement on your pins, you must do the first move of engaging with other users on their own pins. You can start engaging with similar pins like yours. Use your list of keywords that are relevant to your business. Use the keywords that you have on your list that are related to the niche you are in. Check out the pins that you will discover on the search feed. Look at the profile of the user who shared those pins. See if they have pins and boards that you think are similar to your pins. Ask yourself, is this the right pinner who could be my potential follower or potential customer? If you answered yes to that question, then you can browse their pins and engage on their pins that are relevant to your niche. These users will be notified once another user comments on their pins. This will make them notice your brand and follow you. Keep on doing this consistently and in return, these people could trust your brand and follow you. Curate other people's content. On Pinterest, you don't have to upload and share your own pins to get exposure on the platform. You can use other people's content. Choose the relevant pins and save them into relevant boards. And you need to optimize the description so that more people can discover that pin when people search for the terms that you include in the description. This will make them notice your brand and follow you. Doing this will increase engagement with other pinners. Increase your Pinterest engagement rate when you create original pins. Pinners are always looking for fresh ideas, inspiration, or products that they can buy. For some pinners, Pinterest is a search engine to look for something to buy. 
So if you're promoting products that the pinners who are interested in your niche search for, then they're more likely to follow your brand and purchase your products as soon as they see you as a brand that they can trust. Offer thanks. Reach out to pinners who shared your pins. You'll get notified once your pins get repinned. Go to the bell icon to see the notifications. You can see if someone tries on a pin that you've also tried. In addition, you'll be notified once a pinner saved one of your pins. You can check out their profile and comment on the pin and offer thanks. Look for pins to try. Recipe pins are common to have more people to try their pins. You may notice that some recipe pins can attract people to upload photos sharing the recipe that they have tried with their own version. If you browse these photos, you can see the pinners who are actively engaging in this thread. As you can see in this example, there are 20 people who tried this pin. Comment on their shared photo to appreciate their work. You can even like the photo in the section. If this is your pin and people try this pin, then it's a good practice to comment on the pinner's post. These people might check out your profile and discover more of your pins and eventually follow you. Host a contest. Create pins that will attract people to participate in a contest or giveaway. These people will follow your instructions just to get a chance in winning the contest or giveaway. Be sure to add text overlays that will make people see your pins stand out. Add text that will show that your pin is about a contest or a giveaway. You can use the hashtag giveaway or hashtag pin it to win it. If you offer a prize, you can tell everyone how much they can win and this is a sure way to attract people to share your pin, engage, and follow your instructions. You can show the instructions on the pin so that people will know what to do to have a chance in winning the contest or giveaway. You can write the instructions to follow you, share your pin, and save it on the board with a title relevant to your contest or giveaway. Then depending on what you need them to do, add more instructions for that. You can create a giveaway depending on the holiday too. As you can see, this pin is a giveaway for Valentine's Day. Doing this will increase your engagement with other Pinterest users and they can even send you a message regarding your contest or your giveaway. Now that you know about engaging with other Pinterest users, we can now proceed to the next chapter, Pinterest Tools. I'll see you there. Hello guys, welcome to the chapter, Tools to Optimize Your Pinterest. In this lesson, we're going to talk about using Canva to create pins. Let's get started. Creating pins is possible on the Pinterest platform. Just upload a 2x3 ratio image, customize the image by adding text and background color on the text as its overlay. The other way to create pins is to create a custom design using a tool that allows you to use templates. You may find free tools online where you can create Pinterest pins using their app. They already have templates that are designed to work on Pinterest. You just need to choose what you like and think would best suit your brand's pins. The best way is to customize your pin using the online app like Canva. Canva is easy to use as it allows you to add elements to your pin and easily create the image in just a few clicks. Now go to canva.com and you can sign up using Google, Facebook, or with an email address. Once you've successfully logged in to your Canva account, you can search for Pinterest on the search box. As you can see from the drop-down, you can use several Pinterest pin categories like a birthday pin, wedding pin, food pin, or video pin. All of these have the same pixels, 1000 by 1500 pixels, which is still a 2 by 3 ratio. You can choose from the ready-made pins or choose a blank pin. Once you've chosen one of these, you'll be redirected to the template editor. From these left menus, you can see the templates where you can choose from the available templates like video pin, food pin, wedding pin, birthday pin, or all of the pins. The uploads menu can be used to upload an image or video from your drive. The photos menu shows you the trending photos, but if you see this crown icon, it means that you must pay for this photo if you want to use it. The Elements menu allows you to add lines, shapes, frames, stickers, charts, grids, gradients, and more stickers here. The Text menu allows you to add a heading, subheading, 
or body text on your page with style. The music menu gives you more non-copyright music if you want to add it on your videos. The videos menu allows you to add free videos on different categories. The background menu has tons of different backgrounds that you can add with different textures. The folders menu is useful if you have images or elements that you have purchased and liked on Canva. The more menu gives you more options like other apps and, and integrations. Now let's start creating a design. Choose an image. Adjust the size that will fit the recommended Pinterest pin dimension. You can choose a template from the menu and browse from these templates if there's a template that you would like to apply on your pin. Let's try to add elements. Next, we need to add a text overlay to attract pinners and let them know what they will get out of this pin. First, add a shape for the text overlay's background. Resize it and you can also change the color. Then add text. You can try adding a heading then a subheading. Then edit the size so the text is big enough to be noticeable from the other pins. Add the final touches and finalize your pin. Now click this icon to download your pin. We have successfully downloaded the pin on our drive. Now let's upload the pin on our profile. Add a pin title and description. Then add the URL link, then save it on your relevant board. Now this is your pin. Now let's try to create another pin. Let's use a template. This makes it easier to create a pin. These photos are not free, so delete this and let's find free photos on Pixel or Pixabay. Pixels on Pixabay gives you free stock photos that you can use to add to your template without going to their website to download the photos. You can browse and search for free stock photos. Now add more photos and adjust the size to fit the area. You can double click on the photo to adjust the size. Then edit the text here. Ungroup this to customize the other spacing. The middle section occupies more space, so let's give more space to the images by adjusting the background area. Now this will attract people to click on this pin. As you can see, editing and creating stunning pins for your account is easy using this free app. Let's download the second page. The pin's now downloaded in our drive. Now upload the pin on your Pinterest account, add a title and description. Now add the URL link, click this button and save it on the relevant board. Now here's the pin that we made. Now that you know about using Canva to create pins, you can now proceed to the next topic. Automate your Pinterest using Pinflux. I'll see you there. Hello guys. In this lesson, we're going to talk about automating your Pinterest using Pinflux. Let's get started. Attracting visitors to your Pinterest account with high quality pins can be easy with the use of an automation tool. On any niche, it is possible that you'll have tons of competitors marketing or selling on Pinterest. You need help to get high quality organic traffic from Pinterest and that is possible with Pinflux. Pinflux is an established application that is intended to work on Pinterest accounts. It's an automation app that can help business owners or internet marketers manage multiple Pinterest accounts in just a few clicks. Using Pinflux, you can easily get the social traffic that you need to apply on your Pinterest account. This tool will help you as a marketer scoop up hundreds of free leads and potential buyers with the automated traffic generating software. First, you need to add a new account before you can use the features of Pinflux. Click Add New Account. Input your email ID and password and these are the login details for your Pinterest account. The Pinterest account that you'll add will be shown here. This window will let you select, create, and manage boards using this app. The boards shown here can be imported on Pinflux, or you can create a new board with a description. The boards that you have fetched will be shown in this top section. Using Pinflux, you can find new quality pins on Pinterest. This will help you get all the traffic that you'll need and drive it to your profile with free content that Pinflux will find for you. It allows you to find relevant pins that the app finds for you automatically based on the keywords that you have added on the settings menu. You can also set the pin description. And a great feature of Pinflux is that it supports pin text, which means that you can use different sets of pin descriptions and the app will randomly mix descriptions 
to create unique descriptions for every pin that it will save. Then you can set one URL link to add to the pin. Next is to set the board. You'll need the URL of that board, where the pin will be added in this section. From the search results, you can see the pins, then match the keywords you've added under the settings menu. You can pin it manually, or you can add it to queue. For queued pins, they will be added to the pending pins tab. All the pins that are added here will be posted on your account according to the gap between pins that you have set in the settings menu. Next, it also allows you to upload your own images from your drive. Choose the images that you want to upload from your drive. Set the starting time and ending time of uploading pins, add description and link, then save settings. You can see the uploaded pins under the search results tab of the uploaded menu. They'll be uploaded to your account depending on the time you've set here. This is useful when you have created pins from a free graphic design tool like Canva. Next, you can repin images from Pinterest by searching for keywords, add them here, and adjust the settings in this section. You can set it to repin automatically to your board, queue the repins on auto, and set a range of gap between repinning a pin. Then save the settings. This can be useful so that repinning pins on your account will seem random. When you click the Pending Repins tab, Pinflux will help you find more pins based on the keywords that you have added in the settings menu. You can repin now. When you click on the search results, you can repin now or click Add to Queue as Pending Repins and it will be repinned depending on the schedule that you've set. Autofollow Boards You can save time browsing and looking for Pinterest boards that can help your Pinterest tribe grow faster, Pinflux allows you to automatically follow boards that already exist on Pinterest. You can set it to auto follow, auto add to queue, set a starting time and end time of the follow boards, then set the keywords for the boards that Pinflux will find for you. Then save settings. Under the pending boards, Pinflux will find keyword related boards. We can follow these boards now. All pending boards will be seen under this tab. It will be followed depending on the schedule you've set here. To help you keep track of the boards you've followed, click on the Follow Growth tab. You can also unfollow boards automatically so that you won't spend the time browsing and checking each board that you followed and see if you shouldn't follow them. Just set it to Auto Unfollow, choose the start and end time, and the unfollow duration. This is useful if you want to unfollow boards that have a lesser number of pins or followers, then save settings. Next, follow people. You can also follow users based on the keywords that you have set in the follow user settings. You can set it to auto follow, auto add to queue, and set the start and end time of following users. When you click on the pending users tab, Pinflux will show you Pinterest users relevant to your keyword term. You can view the pending users here and follow growth. Next, auto unfollow people. You can set the parameters to auto unfollow people starting from the time you have chosen and the ending time, and then follow after the time duration you have chosen. You can also find group boards depending on the keyword that you typed in. You'll be able to view the pinner of the group board, the number of pins, collaborators, and followers. You can click on the group board to check the pins of that group board. You can view a graphic report of the activity of the app. This data will help you determine and learn about what's working and what's not working for you. Pinflux works for any niche. It works for marketers who are selling products on their e-commerce store, content marketers, offline businesses, social media marketers, affiliate marketers, and also product vendors. Take advantage of this automation tool and start attracting high-quality followers, ensure buyers on your profile, and redirect them to your website growing your followers, and gradually share valuable content on the platform. Now that you know how to automate your Pinterest using Pinflux, we can now proceed to the next chapter, Pinterest Ads. I'll see you there. Hello guys, welcome to the chapter, Pinterest Ads. In this lesson, we're going to talk about an introduction to Pinterest Ads. Let's get started. Pinterest Ads can help your business drive brand awareness, promote video views, drive more website traffic, Get conversions by driving people to take action on your website, attract potential customers, and increase your sales. Pinterest ads can be viewed on your feed 
just like any regular pin, except you may notice the promoted by text after the brand's logo. When you browse your Pinterest feed or search feed using the web app, you can hardly notice Pinterest ads so anyone can click on your ad as they search for pins to click on. On the mobile app, you may notice that there are more Pinterest ads shown here. Most users are using their mobile devices to browse Pinterest. If you live outside the United States, you may encounter seldom ads or no ads at all on your web app or mobile app since Pinterest ads are not yet available on some countries. You may visit the Pinterest Help Center to check the availability of the ad on the platform. You can see here that it mentions that I'm viewing this platform from a region where ads are not yet available. If you click the button to learn more, you'll see the countries where the Pinterest ads are available. There are a few requirements that you must comply with before you can promote your pins using Pinterest ads. First, you need to have a business profile and the pins that you'll promote must be saved on that business account. The pins that you'll promote must be saved to a public board and not on secret boards. Also, it's not recommended to use link shorteners in your pin description or URL. Also, the pin must not contain third-party videos or GIFs. And lastly, follow the Pinterest ad standards so that your promoted pins can reach more audiences and you won't violate any policy standards. You may notice once you create a pin and saved it on your board, you may see the window showing you what your pin will look like when you promote it. On that window, you can easily click the Promote button to start promoting that pin. If you click the Promote button, you will see the created ad page. Step 1 is to select a pin. This is a preview of the pin that you have selected. If people see this ad, they can view this description and the promoted by text beside your profile logo. In this section, you can see the preview for mobile devices and the desktop view. Step 2 is filling out the ad details. As you can see, the URL that we have added on this pin is already shown here. Then set the daily budget and duration for how many days you want to run the pin. Below you'll see step 3, that is to promote your pin. This shows you the total budget and your potential monthly audience size. It's an estimate of the number of people that your campaign can reach. To pay for the ads, you must add your billing. It will use the business address in your account, your email, and contact number. So be sure to input your real address here, then fill in the payment details. Now let's talk about the different Pinterest ads that you may encounter on the platform. First is the promoted pins. These types of ads are like the regular pins that you may find on the platform. This pin is boosted to reach more people depending on the target audiences and demographics you have set. You can use promoted pins to increase your brand awareness, promote engagement, or drive traffic to your website. These types of ads are just regular pins or images that you have uploaded on your business profile. Next, promoted carousels. These types of ads will allow you to use two images up to five images in one ad. This can help you showcase your brand or products using different images, allowing you to highlight different angles of your product images that you want to feature and show it to your target audiences. Next, promoted video pins. You can use videos in promoting your products or services on Pinterest. Videos are ideal for showcasing your brand or your product's best features in a few seconds. Videos can attract more people in viewing your ad, so take time to create the best video that you can have to showcase how people can use your products or services. Next, promoted app pins. This type of promoted pin allows pinners to download or install an app directly from Pinterest. Since most pinners use their mobile device to browse the platform, mobile users are more likely to see this type of pin. They can be linked to a Google Play app for Android devices or an Apple Store for Apple devices. Collections ad. These types of ads will target mobile users and they'll be able to browse and shop for a collection of pins, go to the destination URL, or save the whole collection to a custom board. You can try promoting Pinterest pins using Pinterest ads. Most pinners discover brands and products while they're browsing the platform. 50% of users buy products using the promoted pins, and you can easily monitor and analyze the data from your ad using your business hub's recent ads. These metrics will show you the amount you spend, impressions, saves, and link clicks. 
Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and go to technicforce.com for more tools and training.